Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and uh, for sure invite Muslims to join us. Uh, we will answer some comment and we will answer some little videos. You know the Muslims they come and they post comments and I find their comment very embarrassing. Uh, one of them he says to me, when you want to debate Fifi, look like they agree that Fifi is Fifi and they start using the word I use. They agree with me. Uh, today we have a, a guy his name Muhammad uh, see Mim, uh, he said, you know, I was really a hardcore fan of yours before all of this. So you were a hardcore person who used to make fun of Allah. Mm -hmm. Very interesting Muslim. I must admit that you have, you, you have really made me feel like Islam is lying to me. Aha. Uh -huh. So you were laughing at Muhammad and Allah for a certain time because of me. That's wonderful. But I was afraid that if I leave Islam, my family would be angry. So almost I made you leave Islam, right? Actually, you did because all what happened, you are afraid. And then I have felt like uh, that the most of the year, hmm, then with God help, I have stumbled into a few Muslim apologist channels who started to speak up against you, particularly or particularly Farid, uh, brother, brother. You know, uh, and you can read the rest of the thing. He said that this guy, he made uh, this Fifi, he made 100 uh, video for me and did not respond. Abdul, I did spank those people before even they start responding. Already they are dead. Do you know how many videos I made for Mimi Hijab and Fifi before even they start responding? And today I will give you an example. And not only that, I'm going to give you an opportunity. As long as Fifi, the coward, he will not dare to call me. And look what you say. Uh, you call me donkey, etc. No problem. I'm not going to call you donkey because I don't want to insult donkeys. Look what you said. You said uh, here uh, to all this clown fan and ex-Muslim who blindly follow his word. Please become a fan who can think na rationally. Yes, I mean, think rationally. There's a God. His name is Allah. If you believe in him, he will make your penis endless. I mean, this is rational thinking. Mm-hmm. And they will make your wife bomb one mile. Mm -hmm. And marrying a child, she is six years old, is rational. Mm -hmm. And Allah will give you endless number of slaves, and they are white like pearls. This is rationally thinking. I mean, and beating your wife will make your wife better women. Uh, I mean, this is rational thinking. So, and when you do, you can see how fraud this guy is. But in order to do prove somebody is a fraud, you have to get him busted. And look what happened. You have actually analyzed his claims academically. Okay, academically. Today we'll give you an example of academic response. And also his static, some uh, show manships and behavior during this debate with Muslim apologists. Uh, did you watch my call to Mimi Hijab who said he wanna debate me? You coward. I called Mimi Hijab. He hung up on me more than seven times in less than three minutes. I did not even talk to three minutes. He promised the Muslim to debate me. He hung up on me seven times. He called me bastard. He called me all kinds of names. And the funny they say that why you are hiding in the internet? Why you don't do debate? Here we go. I called you. You coward. You hang up on me. And you call me all kinds of names. So all of you are afraid to death. And here he says to me, uh, like uh, Fifi, he offered me uh, to pay for my ticket or he will come all over the... I mean, Abdul, just to show you how stupid what your claim is. Seven Muslims were with Mimi Hijab. And for sure, I think Fifi, he was, you know, joining the back, in the background. Why they hang up on me more than six to seven times? And why they didn't let me talk? And why they put the speaker far away from the microphone so nobody can hear me? And why I cannot have time to talk? So you Muslim, you coward, you claim that I don't give Muslims time, go watch all my videos. And look what they do. They do video editing and they say Christian friends, he hang up on Muslims. I have thousands of videos. I hang up on Muslims only if they are just wasting my time. Like somebody who says to me, I don't accept the hadith. I don't accept, accept the interpretation. So what we will debate about? When we debate with a Muslim, 
it's someone who believe in Allah and his messenger. And to believe in Allah and his messenger, you have to accept. And today I'm going to give you an example of the fraud. Do you remember, do you remember when Mimi and Fifi, they made this video? Do you remember? You are talking about Fifi, you listen to Fifi. This video simply, supposedly, to talk about Christian Prince, is speaking to a Muslim woman in a very filthy way. But the fact is, it was the opposite. It was your sister speaking to me in a filthy way. They did video editing with no shame. And how Farid, let us say, Mimi Hijab is a whore. But when you partner with the whore, you are a whore too. So there is no way that Fifi, who made a hundred video, and he actually, I believe he is the one actually who cut the video for uh, Mimi Hijab. I believe he is the one behind it. There is no way he did not hear the part, which is few seconds before that part, which is his sister is speaking her filthy language, and she is the one who speaks dirty language to me. How come he didn't see it? He did not see it, and he will never see it because he's a fraud like he's a prophet. This is the original video. We can play it, and everybody can laugh. And actually, we did already get them busted. No shame. No shame, no dignity. So when you say to me, those people, they can refute me, this is how they can refute me. They edit my video. They cut the part where his sister, she was saying that the, the, the Jesus was playing with his mother in a sexual way. I'm not going to say the word, you will hear it. And I said to her, well, it, in fact, it was your prophet who said that you can suckle me. The cowards, they cut the videos, they did editing, for they are a bunch of scumbag. They try to smear you, they try to bully you. So how you can even mention their names? And look at the mouth of this idiot, how open it is. Like, they are very good in acting. <gasps> he said that? <sighs> Oof. This guy, he posted in Twitter a post about the apostate prophet, saying that apostate prophet, as we speak now, he is luring his sister. He was that? Luring his sister. Actually, I think I still have a copy of it. You can watch the video of apostate prophet. So when I quote what their prophet said, they tried to make me a bad person, and they called the videos a Christian uh, a sexual predator, a Christian prince. I mean, look how disgusting, bully, shameful people they are. So look at Farid, how he's listening. Like Farid is like, yeah, yeah, he said that, brother. And Mimi Hijabi said to him, did you hear it? Did you hear it, brother? You know, this is a long conversation. They cut, paste, and they make a duct tape. Now we have, look at his face. Now I will make your face bigger when you hear your sister what she said. It was your sister who was speaking about sex. I was answering her. And not only that, you will not believe what she said. Filthy coward. I was reading, as you see here, and I said to her, I will never. Where is this guy who keep attacking David Wood in the chat? Just ban him. Block him, block him. Anyone he come to our chat here, he attack any other Christian. He is a Muslim. And he is trying to divide the Christians. Get out of here. Coward. Now listen to this. It was his sister, his faithy sister. Just for the one who's trying to, uh, to say David Wood is so soft. You know, David Wood, his shoe is better than your face. At least go and do what he do. If you are really a crusader as you claim using that, 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 that name hiding behind it. If you are a crusader, hmm? what about you to show us what you can do? Okay, David, what is soft? Are you, so, are you harder? Show us. But you are a potato, you are a Muhammad, and coming here to divide the Christians, it doesn't work with me. The socks of David Wood is better than the face of your prophet. Now we go to the topic. Even when they are dirty, by the way, I'm not talking about the socks of David Wood when they are clean, no way. That will be insult to David Wood Sox. I will not do that. So now here, it was his sister speaking, filthy language, and the coward, they edited the videos. Ever do that to you? Your mouth is open, right? Did you hear me saying? I will never do that to you. 
So you cut words and you put them together to make a video to make me look bad? Shame on you. Everybody will laugh at you in a second because we have the original video. Here we go. Let us see who is the one who speak about sex. Listen carefully. This is your sister. She called me. And this is how the conversation started. And this is the name of the, uh, the, the video. Anyone can search for it. Halal for, for a woman to breastfeeding growing up man. Practice muta'a prostitution, Christian Prince. Can you kiss the black stone or not? Can, can you kiss the black stone for me? When, when the next time you will go to Hajj? I want you to kiss the black stone for me. Oh, you want to, to bring this? Okay, why you why you kiss the cross? Show me where, you, show me where it says in the Bible, kiss the cross. No, no, show me, you, show me. No, I don't, no, I don't, no, I don't, no, I don't, no, I don't kiss anything. Show me where, why you're a prophet, why you're a prophet, the pagan prophet, why? See, I'm talking about kissing a black stone, nothing about sex. And look who is start talking about sex. Listen carefully to the decent women harassing a Muslim decent women. Look, your pagan a prophet kiss a stone. Your prophet is a pagan man. Why he kiss a stone? Why he kiss a stone? Why? Oh, the Holy Spirit, the God in the heavens. I know, I know all this. Okay, I live in Arabia. I live in Africa. You know where? You know where? You, know, you know what? You know what? Why you kiss? Why your prophet kiss the black stone? He's a pagan. You are a pagan. Did, did you kiss a stone or not? Did you, did you, did you kiss a stone? Who created the black stone? Who created the black stone? Who created the black stone? Jesus. Jesus? No. She just said Jesus created the black stone. She admitted that Jesus is the creator. <laughs> no, don't, Jesus don't create the stones. He created the whole world. But you must no, you, you must have kissed his stones, right? Why why your prophet kissed the black stone? Did he kiss the black stone? Jesus kissed nothing. Your prophet did. Why your prophet kisses stones? Okay, Jesus, Jesus do more actually. Worse actually. Ah, he play with his so mother boobs. Tell me why he's doing he, that. He play with his mother what? Boobs? Okay, show me, okay show me, show me, okay, show me a verse. Show me a verse. Show me a verse saying that Jesus, he played with his mother boobs. Show me his a verse. Show me a verse saying that Jesus, he play. Listen, listen, you are obviously a trashy person. You just insulted Jesus for no reason. You say Jesus, he played with his mother boobs, right? Okay, you, you listen, you're a liar, number one. Number two, it's your prophet who order women to give their boobs to strangers. Is that true or not? Can I second you? Can I second you? Can I second you? Can I? Can I? See, this is the part they cut from the video. Can I second you? See the coward? So the one you are mentioning his name is not only a scumbag, he is a whore. Because whore is not only a person who get paid for sex, is a person who do have no honor. If they have honor, they will not play that video cutting off what happened. I was saying, she mentioned boobs, she insulted Jesus lying about him. And you Muslims actually, you claim that you believe in Jesus and you defend Jesus. What you did, showing me the opposite. You took the side of your sister whore, and obviously she's a whore to say what she said. And the funny, they say that she is a young girl. I'm sure you she is maybe in the age of, uh, maybe she is older than the mother of Mimi Hijab. A young age will not say what she said. She is filthy. She have a lot of experience with boobs. So the coward, they try to frame you. And those are the one who will answer me. Now we go to business. Forget about this. I have an offer from Muslims. You see, they say that me, me, Fifi, uh, they will not debate me because I have control of Skype. Well, I called Fifi, I saw him, Mimi, and he hung up on me seven times. He did not let me talk. I did not even talk. He not even three minutes. Go and see. And not only that, they don't let me ask any questions. They are the one who play videos. They edit, as you see, and they say, answer this. You have 30 seconds to answer. 30 seconds to answer. Go watch the video. 30 seconds to answer and I get them busted in the 30 seconds. <laughs> so you coward. You are mentioning to me who? I play with those people with my toes. And as long you are saying that those people they can refute me. Huh? Well, let us see. I will give you an example of how Muslims they refute. This is Fifi. Fifi. He made a response to David Wood about Aisha, she was uh, not a little girl when Muhammad had sex with her. 
she already have her, her menstruation. Listen carefully. Most disgusting fact about Muhammad is Muhammad had sex with a prepubescent nine-year-old girl. Why we have this uh, music in the back? I'm not sure. Uh, no, he didn't. Aisha already had her puberty at the time. No, he did not. Aisha, she had her puberty at the time. <laughs> this is the guy who can refute us. Look at this. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. And it says it clearly that Aisha, she had her puberty. She did not reach the age of a puberty. And yet she was over the age of 14. Read carefully. Read carefully. Aisha at that time, when she was playing with her doll, she was little girl and not yet reached the age of her proper puberty. Do you see it? And not only that. This is a Muslim website and this is the fatwa. Those people, they have no dignity, my friend. A person who is proud about his prophet, he do not need to lie. He will say, this is how it is. You like it, like it. You don't want to believe, don't believe. You don't need to lie. This is islamweb.net and this is a fatwa. This is a scholars. Those are not jokes. Hmm? It says here, the question, uh, when the prophet did marry Aisha, was she uh, mature or she is a child? If she was a uh, mature, there's hadith speaking about her that at the age of the time of Khaybar, she was 14. And then the rest of the question. I'm going to flip the page into English translation. So everybody, let me do that. Hold on. And you will see the answer. Those are the scars. So and you want I want you to ask Fifi how dare him to fabricate his religion lying if he is a person who can refute us as you claim. I don't know how they can refute us. Making videos saying, no, CP, it doesn't say that. CP. He don't even speak like a man. He blink in his eyes, he called me Habibi. He is from those ones which you see everywhere. Actually, he made a video, it's called Quran Challenge. I just saw it before I start here searching for a video. And he, uh, I will show you what, what part he chose for his video. But look at this here. So this is the fatwa, and this is the number of the fatwa, and this is the date, all right? Fatwa number 196965. I will click translate to English. All right. This is the name of the topic. Read carefully. Building here is about having intercourse, you know? And Aisha, she was playing with her dolls. So he is asking here a question that there is a hadith mentioned that Aisha, she was at the age of 14 when during the attack of Khaybar. And this is many years after Muhammad Maria Aisha and have sex with her. And here you will see the answer. This is the professional scholars answering, not someone like Fifi, Mumu, Dudu, Potato, who they said, Allah had part, who said so? <laughs> As you see here, they agree that Aisha, she did not reach the age of a puberty when Muhammad, he married her. Actually, she, read that, she reached that age many, many years after Muhammad married Aisha. And here are showing you the reference and the scholars who mentioned that. Uh, let us read together. Hmm. Uh, Therefore, the scholar uh, inferred the marriage of the prophet, etc., to the Aisha with his entry into his age on this issue of a minor marriage. She was a minor. You see, the translation is stupid. Okay. The firstborn who was nine years old, she was, he married her before puberty. He may marry her without her permission, blah, 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 okay. Uh, fatwa, etc., etc., answering the question, uh, did the Prophet, peace upon him, married minor, and etc. And here it says, the answer, they are showing you that Aisha, she used to play with her girls, her dolls, 
and now they are showing you why she did not she was able to play with her dolls because simply she was not she was authorized because she is not considered a mature person she did not have her menstruation yet do you see it not adult yet this is the translation of Google which is stupid you know so those are the scholars and they are mentioning you again and again and give you all the reference that Aisha she never have her menstruation even after the age of 14 and the fatwa is in the front of you right in Arabic because maybe the, the English translation can be confusing look what it says she was young in the age when she was married to the Prophet and she went to his house with her toys and none of the stories say that she was a woman in the time of her uh, marriage which means when he did intercourse and most likely that she was busy with her toys uh, at that time because and she was doing that until she was or until she became mature until she became a mature, mature person and then you will see here that the hadith mentioned about Aisha there's a chapter in the hadith that says Tazweej al-Sigar which means marrying minors they have a chapter about it so the scholars they agree that Aisha she was not mature she did not have her menstruation and they are lying trying to defend all right read carefully it was allowed to Aisha to do that to play with the dolls because she was not mature she was not mature and this is a Sahih Hadith If we take this, the, 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 the word as, it's, as it is, and we go to a hadith, let us do that. See if we can get it in English. Actually, it's the same, uh, but it's not appearing. Yeah, but it's the same as the one we showed you here. It says exactly the same. She was allowed to play in her dolls, and this is many years after she married Muhammad, and she was yet not reaching her puberty. So, who is the one you should believe in if you are a person who speak about honesty and dignity? Fifi, Mimi, or Sahih al-Bukhari? And this is a hadith narrated by Aisha. You coward, you accept what Fifi say just to promote your cult. And the coward Fifi he say what he say to promote his cult against Aisha, which means he's saying Aisha is a liar. He's saying Aisha, she is a fraud. She is a whore as the Arab at that time accused her and the Muslim accused her. She stepped with Safan ibn Mu'attab and then Allah have to make a verse saying she did not. And obviously this is a verse made by Muhammad. So how you can accept those people to teach you Islam? But I will give you a chance and opportunity. Anyone, any Muhammad. He think that those people can debate me. You see, they say that Christian Prince, he controlled Skype. I offered already that I will call them to their Skype. The same as I did with Mimi uh, Hijab. He hang up on me seven, six times in less than three minutes. Who is the coward? I will call you. And those who hide behind moderator, why you need a moderator? You are the moderator. I am willing to call Fifi, and he is the moderator. Hmm? What do you think? <laughs> do he dare to do it? He will not. Do Mimi Hijab dare to do it? I did it already with him. He hung up on me. He did not let me talk. He called me all kinds of names. He insulted my mother when he is the fact he is a son of Muta. And the video is there but as long the one we are talking about he is a coward and he will not dare 
to let me call him and he will not dare to call me. I mean, look how embarrassing it is. I will call you and you are the moderator. You go live in your program. I mean, how I can stop you? <laughs> but I will give you an example. As long as Fifi cannot come for, uh, uh, you know, there is uh, bad weather. There is bad weather. He cannot. He can fly all the way to the end of the world. I send his Christian Prince. Big mistake. My friend, your potato, he exposed Islam by himself. This is, if you go here, forget about this video here, okay? This is about Muhammad, uh, uh, about him supposedly getting busted, uh, David Wood, and saying, no, David. Uh, no, he didn't. Aisha already had her puberty at the time. David might be confusing Muhammad peace be upon him with the Moses of the Bible. <laughs> Moses of the Bible. Anyway, so let us finish this video here. Here we have another video made by Fifi comparing his prophet to guess to who? To the prophet of the Mormon. Saying that the prophet of the Mormon, he made a challenge to make a book like his book. And Muhammad, he made a similar challenge for his book. Be noted that the challenge brought forth by Joseph Smith is fundamentally the same as the Quran's challenge. Not only is the idea similar, but the wording of bringing something like onto it is exactly the same wording as George Sale's translation of the Quran, the same translation that was available at the time. Hmm. I mean, you see how he made comparison between a false man and a false man? And then he, at the end, he will say that the difference is that the challenge of Muhammad stand while the challenge of the Mormon prophet did not stand. I mean, here we find it very funny. But before we go here, I want to show you something. Uh, Mimi, he is very good at. He was showing us that people, they make a challenges. Others challenge one another over licking toilet bowls. I mean, from all the challenge he did not get except a gay. This is the challenge he got. Why he chose this? In a video speaking about the Quran, and he's a prophet. Others challenge one another over licking toilet bowls. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Maybe he meant to say that his prophet is the same. Or maybe he is, this is his interest. I mean, how even you come to this web video? Unless this is what you watch. From all the challenge in the internet, you could not find anything except this. But look, he is the one who said, challenge failed. Nobody can came with the Quran like the Quran. But let us show you how stupid he is. First of all, he said that the Arab could not. But isn't it the Arab, they laugh at Muhammad in the time of the Quran. And they said to him, if we want to bring book like this, we can, but this is a stupid book. And they told him, this is nothing but the fairy tales of the ancient. So when you say to somebody, make a book like this book, and then the person, he said, this is a stupid book. What are you talking about? And you say that the challenge failed. Huh? The challenge failed? How it fail? They challenge him, a really challenge. He said, if you are telling the truth, okay, let your God do miracles. He have no miracles. Hmm? This is the challenge. I can say right now, you can make a book like mine. If you try to make a book like mine, I will say you are copying. Look at the stupidity. Allah, he made of them an example saying that those people, they are listening to you, but he will not believe. And when they debate you, they debate you, they say, this is nothing but the false tales of the ancients. Look how many times. The tales of the ancients. They are making fun of it. It's a cartoon. Flying car with the sun set in murky water. And we will go that in a second to this part. 
So all of those verses saying the same. Right? They challenged him to prove that he's a prophet. He could not. The challenge to make a book. If I make a book right now, like the Quran, he will say, ah, oh, I make fun. Christian prince, you don't speak good Arabic. Anyone who will try to make a, you know, actually, even according to Muslims, they, they say there's a guy, his name is Musaylama. And Musaylama tried to make Quran like the Quran. Ask them. And they fabricate a statement that Musaylama, he said to make it funny. But look, here we can get them busted so easy. The Quran, according to Muhammad and according to Muslims, was a copy of others. Is it? Umar, he said that Allah, he agreed with me in three. Some hadith says five and six and seven. Some they say ten. What he agreed with him? How nobody can make Quran, but yet Allah, he take what Umar ibn Khattab said, and he made Quran as Umar said. Nobody can make Quran, but the hadith confirm, this is what the Muslim says, that nobody can make Quran, but the hadith confirm that Allah, he stole Quran from Umar al-Khattab. So you coward when you say, those people, they can respond to us. Respond to what? What is the response? They will say this is Sahih Bukhari is fake. The hadith says, so the Quran revealed the same as I have said. The same what? The same as I have said. My Lord agree with me in three things. Agree with him. <laughs> what do you mean agree with you? Allah took the Quran from Omar and Omar he says something. Muhammad he take it, he make it Quran. And read carefully, this is not my statement. It says, so this verse revealed the same as, as, as I said was revealed. The same exactly. The verse about the hijab, it was Omar who said that verse before Allah. The Kaaba, it was Omar. The threatening the wife of Muhammad to be divorced and replace them, exchange them, it was Omar. So who is the Prophet? And how come the Prophet did not receive the Quran before, after uh, he received it after Umar? Umar, he said it, and then Allah copied it, and then Allah, he sent it to Muhammad, and yet nobody can make Quran. And what about the satanic verses? Are you going to deny the Quran? The Quran says that shaitan he throw in the mouth of Muhammad satanic verses. No, oh, see, he, he, he will give me the guy who licked the toilet seat. You know, he's a friend. Hmm? The Quran say clearly that Allah, he will delete what shaitan he throw in the mouth of Muhammad. And we can go and read the interpretation of the Muhammadan. You see, the Muslim, they say, uh, you did lie about uh, Ibn Kathir. Well, let us open Ibn Kathir in Arabic and English. In English, it's not the same as in Arabic, but we can open it and we will see what happened. We can open Al Qurtubi, Al Tabari, Al Jalalain, all the interpretation. And what about the Quran? The Quran confirmed that yes, the shaitan he threw in his mouth satanic verses. If we go right now and check the Islamic interpretation, the Muslim they say Christian princes lying. What about their scholars? Chapter 22, verse number 52. Nobody can make Quran, but Shaitan can make Quran. Because when you, when Muhammad he take Quran from Shaitan, that's me Quran is coming from Shaitan originally actually. Because how Muhammad did not notice that this is not from Allah. You know what I mean? I mean, who knows better the Quran? Who can examine the Quran better? Someone uh, Fifi and Mimi and the Twilight Seat liquor, or Muhammad? This is Muhammad himself. Read carefully. This is their scholar. This is not a Christian prince. This is a real scholar, not Fifi and Mimi and Susu. It says. So, but when he recited the scripture, Satan cast into his recitation. So Muhammad, he said the words. 
what is not from the Quran, but which those to whom he, the Prophet, had been sent, would find pleasing. The Prophet had it during the, an assembly of a man of Quraysh, after reciting the following verses from Surah Al-Najm. Have you considered Allah al uzza and Manad the third? As a result, Satan he cast in them into his tongue without the Prophet being aware. <laughs> That's mean Shaitan, he have control of the mind of Muhammad. What is the protection of Allah? So you see, they say we refuted you. The Christian prince, we refuted you. This is your scholar. You don't refute me, you idiot. Refute at Jalalain. It's not me who's saying that. He recited the satanic verses, and yet your prophet, according to you, to give him excuse, he is unaware, which means Muhammad speak for shaitan, and he is unaware. Muhammad became a prophet of shaitan, and he is unaware. Muhammad inserting verses of shaitan in the Quran, and he is unaware. Who is saying that? You're a scholar. So you get me a kid says he can refute me. This is why those cowards, they were, not, they were there to debate me. Not only they edit my videos, try to fabricate stories. They cannot refute me. So here we notice that Shaitan he can make Quran. And actually, if we talk about the Quran, who can make Quran like the Quran? I, I have to admit nobody because this is the most stupid book. And I will give you an example. And I want you to be my witness. I will use the help of a brother Farid, sister, sorry. To prove my point let us see are you ready sister Sarid, Sarid, Farid is going to help us brother so we have here uh, <clears throat> brother uh, upstate prophet uh, he was exposing the, the the sun set in murky water and sister Fifi decide get a, this is actually Fifi is so upset from me because I spank him with no mercy long before even he start making videos trying to respond to me this is Fifi responding to the apostate prophet about the sun set in murky water be my witness I did not say anything. He did it. We can play the video from the beginning, actually. To be fair. Assalamu alaikum, my fellow flat earthers. Today we're going to be... Stop! Is that a joke? Or you are serious? Yes, the Quran says the earth is a flat. The Quran says the earth is a flat. And I can show you endless numbers of verses in the Quran saying the earth is a flat. Flat Earth, aren't you a Muslim? Isn't it your prophet who says Allah will come in the third part of the night? Isn't it your God who says we made the Earth flat like carpet? Hmm? Did he or he did not? Did he say we made it like a ball or something? The Bible says we made it like, like a sphere. Like in the shape of a ball. The Quran says we made the earth flat. What about the haha? Which the Muslim make a video saying that the word the haha mean, brother, like in the shape of an egg. But the fact is the opposite. Allah, he made it, and look at this translation, he made it wide extent. Extent. <laughs> the haha, -ha, simply, when you make a dye or making a bread, you have a piece of wood, and you push the dye in the top of it, you push the, the wood in the top of it, and that will spread, spread the, the dye will make it flat. You can make, and you can go right now and see the interpretation. You see, the, the Muslim, they can tell you whatever they want. When we show you something, you can go right now, check it out, and see, it says it's flat. Chapter 79, verse number 30. Actually, let us do it. So they will not, because if we don't, if we do it still, and they say to us, you are liars. You, you show them in the screen, and you say you are lying. So chapter 79, verse number 30. Let us go here. 
The Muslim interpretation, obviously Muslims are liars. The scholars, the scholars, brother, they are liars. Anyone exposing Muhammad is a liar. Doesn't matter he's a scholar or not. Huh? Read it. Chapter 79, verse number 30, Tafsir al-Jalalain, and he made the earth flat. So from the first second in the, in, the, in the video, he made fun of his God. Yes, the Quran says the earth is a flat. And this is what the word means, the ha ha. No, ZB, it doesn't say the ha ZB. <laughs> what a ho ho. <laughs> so those are the ones who want to refute me. But hold on, we are not done. Because things is going to get more funny. And actually, I'm so glad you mentioned his name because I like to play, you know, with little rats and cats. They are like that for me. So look what brother he said in this uh, uh, video. Let us continue with this video. Hold on. Uh, let us close some pages. We have too many pages open. All right. Okay, brother. And the name of the video, brother? Debunk, what? Debunk the sunset in the muddy water, muddy spring. Watch and die laughing. Going through one of the most problematic, shocking, and faith shaking verses in the Quran. Well, to Ridwan at least. Ridwan says that when he read the Quran the first time, this was one of the verses that stood out to him and it played a role in him leaving Islam. As you can see in the title of the video, this verse is the one that speaks of the sun setting into a murky spring. I'm sure that I've read this verse over a hundred times and I've never really been affected in the same way that Rudban has been. Surely, that's because I'm not as smart as he is. Oh, I'm gonna enjoy this one. Well, you know what? Your video will show us not only you're smart, you are the most certified donkey in the history of Islam. Everybody by witness. I'm not going to use anything to prove Islam is stupid except this video. His video. Is that fair? He is going to prove that Muhammad is a fraud. Listen carefully what he will say. Remember, this video is done after very, very, I mean, even the Muslim, they call it annihilation, refutation to the apostate prophetation. This is the annihilation. Listen carefully and laugh. Let's get to the video. Until when he reached the setting of the sun, he found it setting in a spring of dark mud, and he found near it a people. The sun goes there for a bath after the day, I guess. Many Muslim apologists of our time try to argue that the Quran verse is misunderstood or was just mistranslated. That's absolutely not true, but stay with me and see how they do that. The first way of making the Quran not look too embarrassing is to corrupt it and to make it correct again. If you search on Google for this Quran verse, you will likely land on Quran.com, which features the Sahih International translation of this verse. In that translation, you will see that they added something that doesn't exist. The verse suddenly says that he found it as if it was setting in a muddy spring. See how they lie to you? Ridwan is correct in saying that this is an addition to the text. However, it is not a corruption. Ridwan seems to not be aware that the inclusion of brackets is an indication that the word as if were not in the original text. So why you add it? <laughs> See guys? So why you put it there? If the Quran did not say as if, is Allah short of knowing that he can use the word as if? Are you Muslim correcting Allah and you notice that this is stupid, he should as if? So he admitted that the Muslims, they are adding letters between two brackets to make you change your mind about the way you think because the verse doesn't say as if. And obviously Allah did not put as if. So there's no need for as if. Otherwise you are saying that Allah verses is not really clear. So we need to add as if because Allah Quran, which is a miraculous, is a stupid, confusing. Isn't it you who said nobody can make Quran like this? So why you need to add as if? This is amazing Quran to the point we need to add as if to make the Quran make sense. As if. So that it doesn't make sense without as adding as if. And this is what Fifi he just admitted. 
Listen carefully and love. If brackets is an indication that the word as if were not in the original text. Had this been an intentional corruption of the text, the brackets would not have been... You stupid, he just said to you, intentional, intentional corruption of the meaning, you idiot. Of the meaning. You are stupid. You are a donkey. Oh, sorry, I will not, because some donkeys might sue me. You are not a donkey, sorry. No, the donkey don't upset me. Why you are adding something not in the text? This is intentionally done or not? Why you don't leave it as it is? Continue. Included in the first place. To be honest, this has nothing to do with the video. I'm just going out of my way to show that Rudwan doesn't seem to have any idea of the basics. Here we come to number two of those apologetics. Many say that the translation is simply not clear and that you need to read it in a context, that the word used for finding it actually describes the situation only from Dulkarnain's perspective, not as a general truth. So when the Quran first here says, he found it setting in a muddy spring, it means that he saw it that way, not that the sun actually sets in a muddy spring. First off, as a lover of linguistics, I have to say that that's absolute garbage. But Edvan actually loves garbage, since he's a waste man. But let's see what he has to say about the linguistics. But in order to refute such apologetics, I can do three things. Look at other translations. That won't be necessary. We are in agreement that the words as if do not exist in the text. Compare the word to other verses. Good, we could do that. And use common sense. Oh boy. Um, well, there are so many witty retorts that I could make. I'm, I must have talking. Yes, he agree with common sense. It's common sense, brother. It's common sense, brother, that the prophet, he took a flying donkey and he come before the sunset when the Quran says it take 1000 years for the angel to go to heaven one way, brother. It's common sense, brother, that the Quran saying that Allah will give you women big boobs. It's common sense, brother, that Allah, he said to the Muslims that it is good to good provision from, from alcohol and Allah make it as a miracle for you. Alcohol, beer is a, is a miracle from Allah. It makes sense. It makes sense that Allah will give you boys who they are naked go around you the Kaaba, around you in the heaven. <laughs> and they will be serving you alcohol. Brother, it makes sense. And now he's going to teach a prophet about what makes sense. Go ahead. But it's so easy that it feels like cheating. <laughs> If you want to look at the word, the word used here for finding is wajadaha, which means he found it. Wajada means he found. Now, we don't even have to go far. The same word is used again in the same verse. When it says he found near it a people, he found here is wajada. It's the exact same word. So is this as if now he didn't really find those people? It was only as if he found those people? Well, Ridvan, you failed to realize the term wajada isn't always used to refer to a physical reality. If you go nine verses back, this will become quite clear. Notice this verse speaking of Musa السلام, and his companion finding a wall that was about to collapse. The Arabic states, فَوَجَدَ فِيهَا جِدَارًا يُرِيدُ أَنْ ينقض. Now, the literal Ridvanian translation would be they found a wall that wanted to collapse. In other words, the wall literally wanted to kill itself. Yes, the wall had struggled for so long. Let us see how stupid this idiot and what he just did. He just said that it's not about physical reality, but isn't it says there for wajada fi hajidaran? So what he found, he found a wall, you idiot. The statement about he want to collapse is a statement describing how the, how the, how the wall is almost falling down. But the word wajada is about finding a wall and then the rest is description about how he found the wall. So look how stupid he is. He just confirmed what the apostate prophet said, that he found physically. Yes, it's physically. Is that wall was there? Yes. Is, is the wall going to collapse? Yes. The statement as, if he, as if he is going to go and jump, or he want to jump, it's just to tell you that the, the, the wall is collapsing. Stupid idiot. So yes, Wajada he found. Reporting a find, you idiot. He found, yes, a physical wall. And the verse in front of you. And if we go right now to the Quran, we will see he found the wall. Actually, it's in front of us. Hmm? This is a translation he chose for us. Right? Let us see. 
Uh, okay, it says. What is the translation, brother? When they come, etc. Okay. Uh huh. Where is the where is the wall? Uh, this here it doesn't show the translation for this verse. So it's for translation for the other verse, I think. So uh, okay, yeah, this is the verse after. You see the translation here is not showing the translation. You see, let us see. Did he found the wall or not? We can go right now to the Quran. Stupidity is amazing. All right. Thank you very much, brother. <laughs> this is a translation of the Muslims. Did they found a wall, physical wall, or it was a spiritual wall? You said, it doesn't mean, brother, that it's a physical thing. No, it's a physical thing, you idiot. They found there a wall. So the word found is attached to a wall. The rest is description how the wall look, the wall look like. This is the guy who would have correct my Arabic. So he chose for us, he, he wanted to refute, but in fact he showed us other verse in the Quran saying clearly that they found the wall and this is a physical wall because he repaired the wall. He did repair the wall. You see here it says he repaired, but he set it up straight. He fixed the wall. It's a physical wall. So you idiot, you, you, you just said in the video, this is not physically. He did not found the wall. The fact he found the wall, the word here is about finding a wall and the rest is description how the wall look like. So this, this, this coward, he said, ah, he found how the wall will collapse. No, he found the wall. And the rest is description about how the wall situation is. Coward, you got your best at <laughs> And then guys, he, he have more to say. The story is not over yet, brother. The disaster actually is coming. It's not. We are not in the disaster yet. This is just little disasters here and there. A wall that wanted to collapse. Yes. In other words, the wall literally wanted to kill itself. See how they change and they corrupt their Quran meaning? The Quran doesn't say the wall will kill itself and will jump. The Quran says that it's almost like he is going to jump. It's a, it's a statement of a speech. But yes, it is a physical wall. It's located there, and the guy who his name is Al Khadr, he fixed it, literally. Yes, the wall had struggled for so long, struggled with paying the bills, hmm. years of not receiving the respect it deserves. Finally, it had come to a conclusion that there was only one way out. Don't do it, wall. We all love you. Okay, you say he is making fun here, right? But he just said it clearly, a very smart thing will help us a lot. What he said about the wall, listen carefully, what, what he said about the wall, the cartoon. I like this cartoon, actually. In other words, the wall literally wanted to kill itself. Yes, the wall had struggled for so long, struggled with paying the bills. So why your prophet, he wanted to kill himself like the wall? You see, by making fun of this, being like a child, stupid a child, thinking by making mockery of the guy, you can get away from the stupidity of your Quran. You just made a mockery of your prophet because it was your prophet who tried to commit suicide. Are you saying he was suffering with the bills? Is it this is your prophet? He climbed the mountains many times. And each time he go to the top, Jibreel, he hold him from his panty, and he said to him, don't do it. You are truly a prophet. Can you make for us a cartoon about Muhammad next to the wall? Because obviously both of them, they are desperate, and maybe Muhammad, he did not pay his bills. You see? This is your prophet. 
it says here the prophet became so sad as we have heard that he intended several times to throw himself from the top of the high mountains and every time he went to up to the top of the mountain in order to throw himself down Jibreel would appear in the front of him before him and say oh Muhammad you are indeed a messenger in truth and then whereupon his heart would become quiet and he would calm down and he would return home and whenever uh, the period of coming of the inspiration used to become long he would go and as before try to commit suicide again the wall the wall yes the wall when i commit suicide brother yes the wall and the prophet both of them brother i love your cartoon you are the cartoonist of the year what happened to muhammad he was suffering from what why muhammad want to commit suicide like the wall he did not pay his bills? Kill itself. Yes. The wall had struggled for so long. <laughs> struggled with paying the bills. <laughs> Years of not receiving the respect. See how they make fun of their stupid prophet? They forgot that their prophet is trying to commit suicide too. And look how the mockery. I mean, the Quran is speaking about the wall is going to collapse. And yes, it says he found a wall. The rest is have nothing to do with the topic. They try to make a mockery of the person to avoid responding to him. But anyway, the more mockery they do, the more we laugh at them. Because they made a mockery of Muhammad. It deserves. Finally, mm -hmm. it had come to a conclusion. Right. That there was only one way out. Yeah, go to the top of the mountain and try to jump. And then Jibreel, he appeared in front of you, holding from your panty, says, truly you are a prophet. Which means Muhammad, you don't believe is a prophet. The hadith says that. Each time he tried to commit suicide, what Jibreel said to him? Truly, truly, you are a prophet. And then Muhammad, he come down, he go home. Which means Muhammad himself don't believe himself. Do you see it? You are indeed Allah Messenger. In truth, whereupon his heart would become quiet and would calm down and would return. And then after some time, the inspiration stopped coming to him, which is hearing voices, stupidity. He go to throw himself again. The same as the wall, brother. Tell us more about the wall, brother. Hmm. Go ahead. Don't do it, wall. Yes, wall. We all love you. We do. But alas, it was too late. See, the wall here is not lucky. Jibreel did not stop him. Well, at least this is how Ridvan <laughs> probably understood the verse when he first read it. Now, the reason why Ridvan does not hold this understanding is because he knows that 7th century Arabs couldn't have been that stupid. However, Ridvan could not help but project a primitive view onto the Arabs when it came to astronomy. Just to show you how stupid you are, isn't it the Arab, when Muhammad, he said that to them, they said to him, this is the ancient fairy tale stories, you idiot. Yes, the Arab, they were not stupid. This is why Muhammad, he had to go to war with them, with his gang, and force them to convert. Again, here we go. The Arab saying to Muhammad, this is nothing but fairy tale, you idiot. So the Arab are not stupid, you are. All those verses in the front of us saying the same. This is the, the ancient fairy tale stories. Do you see it? This is nothing but the, the tales of the ancient. Do you see it? So you say, at that time the Arab, they are stupid. They did not notice. Yes, they noticed. And they said to him many times that. Coward. Now, tell us more. Debunk, debunk, debunk. Yeah. Economy and this projection is not justified, as we shall soon see why. Uh huh. Keep in mind, if a man said "wajatullah," it wouldn't mean that he literally saw Allah. You see how stupid this statement is. You idiot. You idiot. You donkey. When you say, "I found a car." You cannot say it's the same as I found Allah, you idiot. Because a car is a physical object. Can be found around us. When he say I found that, it, it, it is the sun, you idiot. It's not the same about something spiritual. So you see how they try to confuse you? If I say I found love, is it the same as I say I found the wall? I mean, who is the stupid here? If a man said, 
it wouldn't mean that he found his heart, but rather that he found a female partner that he loved. You are a stupid idiot. This is, can be true if he did not find a physical object. The word after would decide if this is a physically finding or something metaphorically coward. You see how they mix things up? The guy, he did not say, I found my love. What does this have to do with this? He said, I found the sun. Setting, it's a physical action. How, what does this have to do with this? Those are the ones who can refute us. This is a refutation now. Hmm. True refutation. Love. Now let me offer something else. If this same sun sinking in a muddy spring narrative was found in another Islamic source, would that just be a coincidence? Narrated by Abu Dhar, I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah, who was riding a donkey while the sun was setting. He asked, do you know where this sets? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. He said, it sets in a spring of warm water. Advanced hadith is a shortened form. The full version can be found in Musad al-Bazzar. The report says that the sun goes into a muddy spring and then prostrates under the throne of Allah. Soon I'll explain. Shut up, you faith, you liar. Here we go. This is the hadith. And this is in Sunan Abi Dawood. And it's Sahih in chain. What he will say about this, listen carefully what he will say. He will make this hadith is sick, is da'if, is rejected, all, all the garbage. But as you see, they don't they don't reject they don't reject this hadith. Do you see it? Let us hear what he will say in his propaganda agenda. Explain why the first part of the hadith, which speaks of a muddy spring, is a false attribution to the Prophet, peace be upon him. This hadith can indeed be traced back to Muhammad because the transmission between the people who reported this hadith has been authenticated. This is actually the definition of sahih or authentic in hadith terminology. But, but, because the Quran verse is an example of how you sound when you learn basic science from 7th century Arabs, Muslim scholars don't want to take this hadith at face value and therefore only call it sahih in transmission, in chain. Some add explanations like, uh, well, someone in the transmission was not a reliable person. Sorry, no. You are going to give a lesson in Hadith Sciences, Ya Radvan? <laughs> Guys, what, what, what next Fifi will say is the most priceless, stupid thing will make Muhammad the most popular Fifi in the world. This is what he will say, the response. Okay, let me show you how this is done. The Prophet, peace be upon him, narrated the hadith to Abu Dhar. Abu Dhar narrated it to Yazid bin Sharik. Yazid narrated it to Ibrahim. Now pay attention. Al-A'mash Yunus Harun bin Sa'ad, Musa bin Musayyab, and Abdul A'la Taymi all narrated the same hadith without mentioning anything about the sun going into a spring. On the other hand, the hadith in Sunan Abi Dawood that Radwan is quoting is the hadith of Sufyan bin Hussein from Al Hakam bin Utaybah from Ibrahim. This is the one that speaks of the sun setting in the murky spring. Al Hakam is outnumbered five to one, and therefore this wording is rejected as an addition. <laughs> out of five one out of five so they could not say he's a liar they could not say this guy is fabricating because but because uh, when you say one out of five is he a liar secondly who said that muhammad did not mention the same story twice or three times huh how you know and how come you Muslims you accept the hadith if it's in total agreement with the Quran and now you don't want to agree with the Quran 
Isn't the Quran says he found the sun set in murky water? <laughs> so what do you mean one out of five? All the Muslim that recite the Quran saying that the sun set in murky water, he found it sitting, and now he is one out of five. Actually, there's billion Muslim, they agree with him. They recite the verse as it is in the Quran. But let us see what he will say after, because it's going to be the most priceless, stupid thing ever. It should be noted that I do not personally believe that this is a misattribution to Ibrahim from Al-Hakam. Rather, it's more likely that this is from his student Sufyan, who has been criticized by some scholars of hadith. Some scholars criticize Sufyan. Shame on you, Sufyan. You are a liar like Fifi and Mimi, who said that Allah don't have parts. He don't have hands and legs. A liar. Shame on you. Also, none of the students of Al-Hakam narrated this hadith from him except Sufyan, hmm. which makes it likelier that this is a mistake from Sufyan. Now, Ridvan... Did you hear mistake? I mean, you add sunset and murky water a mistake? Or this is a lie, but because he's a coward, you don't dare to say he's lying, you know. <laughs> this is going to be a mistake. What mistake is that? He may insist as much as he likes that the addition <laughs> of Sufyan is acceptable. But seriously, who cares what Udvan thinks? Exactly. Let's assume. From I care what you think. Tell us what you think. For a moment that Udvan's addition is correct. That would mean that the sun, at the end of a long day, soaks into a muddy spring now please ignore the fact that our artist placed the murky spring in the middle of the pacific ocean um anyways while the sun is bathing it finds the throne of god under the water and then starts to um prostrate towards it now the issue with this ridiculous understanding is that the throne of allah is not underwater but it is listen carefully what he was saying where is the throne of allah Listen carefully, I'll do it. The guy who's named, he will respond to me, right? Okay. Prostrate towards it. Now, the issue with this ridiculous understanding is that the throne of Allah is not underwater, but Wait. it is above the heavens. Okay. Above the heaven. Let us get him busted. <laughs> Fifi is a sarsour. You know sarsour? He's a cockroach. Look how small he is. He said that Allah's throne is above the heaven, but he will not mention that yes, Allah, his throne is above the water. He's a coward, he is a sarsour. Do you see it? His throne is above the water. Do you see it? His throne is above the water. Do you see it? All those hadith are sahih. Above the water. So what the, what, what the Quran says? The sun set in the murky water, and the way, for it explain, <laughs> under the throne of Allah, but uh, uh, apostate prophet, he think the throne of Allah is under the water, so it's, the sun is taking a bath, you stupid idiot. The throne of Allah is above the water, as you say. So you wanted to refute him saying, well, okay, the sun went under the in the water to take a bath, is, so you are saying that the throne of Allah is under the water, but not even a single Muslim child he do not know that Allah's throne is above the water. Why he did hide this from, from us? Because you are a fraud. Do you think Muslims that this Fifi, he do not know the hadith that it says the throne of Allah is above the water? Listen carefully what he said. Is that the throne of Allah is not underwater, but it is above the heavens. More importantly, the throne is larger than the heavens and earth. So, to conclude, the addition in this hadith strongly contradicts established aspects of Islamic ideology. But see, you see how he lie. The Islamic ideology believe that the throne of Allah is above the water, and all the hadith we showed you, like this one, it says Hassan. The rest, all this is a Sahih, as example, Sahih Muslim. Can he say this is not true? Can he say, I don't accept it? This is Ibn Majah. This is Al-Bukhari. Is Al-Bukhari true? Huh? Is Al-Bukhari true?
and his throne above the water. Do you see it? So the sun go and prostrate under Allah's throne, which is above the water. So where did the sun goes? In the water. <laughs> Muslims, am I showing you the reference or not? He said, in Islam, we don't believe in this. Islamic establishment doesn't say that, doesn't say that Allah throne is above the water. He never heard of it. The addition in this hadith strongly contradicts established aspects of Islamic ideology. But carry on, Ridvan, please. Now, if we accept it for a second that the Hadith was indeed wrong, which makes it a bombastic coincidence that such a Quran first and such a Hadith both exist. Actually, it wouldn't be a coincidence. The addition in the Hadith is due to the narrator's misunderstanding of the Quranic verse. The narrator misunderstanding of the Quran. Did you hear this? So he admitted. He admitted that Muslims' understanding of the Qur'an is the same as a prostate prophet. Did you hear it? Listen, listen carefully again. Who is the one who has misunderstanding now? So the misunderstanding is going farther than me and the prostate prophet and you and the atheist. It is even the scholars, the companion of the prophets. They don't know what they are talking about. They are donkeys. Listen carefully. The addition in the hadith is due to the narrator's misunderstanding of the Quranic verse. Did you hear it? Misunderstanding of the Quranic verses. So the narrator who is a scholar, he understands the Quran carefully according to understand, understanding that the sun set in murky water. He just said that. But I thought the Quran is a miracle. And what kind of miracle will make a Muslim scholar misunderstanding the Quran? Is that the miracle you are talking about? This is a miraculous book will make you mis misunderstanding it. I mean, do you see the miracle? Nobody can make a book like this because it makes you misunderstanding it. And the Quran says we made the Quran clear. So, the, so you might know. But he just admitted that the Muslim scholars, they have a misunderstanding of the Quran. But Fifi, he understand the Quran better. But look what he will say now. One of you, he said that Fifi, he made a video saying Bukhari is not accepted. Hold on. Look what Fifi, he will say. Fifi always give, give himself nails. Listen carefully what he will say next. And then adding it into the Hadith. But please do go on. Then we could take an alternative and see this. Narrated by Abu Dhar. Once I was with the Prophet in the mosque at sunset time. The Prophet said, O oh, Abu Dhar, do you know where the sun sets? I replied, Allah and his Apostle know best. Again, you shouldn't have said that. He said, it goes and prostrates underneath Allah's throne. First of all, yes, this is the correct hadith. It is the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari as we can see. And it clearly conflicts with the verse that speaks of Dhul Qarnain's perception. Hold on. Did he say this is correct? Did he say this hadith is correct? Listen carefully. Listen what this idiot he just did to his, his prophet. How many people will leave Islam now? Listen carefully again. Please do go on. Then we could take an alternative and see this. Narrated by Abu Dhar. Once I was with the prophet in the mosque at sunset time. The prophet said, O oh Abu Dhar, do you know where the sun sets? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. Again, you shouldn't have said that. He said, it goes and prostrates underneath Allah's throne. First of all, yes, this is the correct hadith. Okay, hold on. We are in the minute 9.52 in the video. Do you remember this guy he said in the beginning of the video? Hello, flat earther. Assalamu alaikum, my fellow flat earthers. And he just admitted that this hadith is correct. Where it says that, do you know where the sun goes? <laughs> He said it's correct. <laughs> well, this is what the flat earther believe that the sun is the one going around, is going from the east to the west, and the earth is a flat. <laughs> and he said, yes, he agree with it. <laughs> then we could take an alternative and see this. Narrated by Abu Dhar. Once I was with the Prophet in the mosque at sunset time. 
The Prophet said, O oh, Abu Dhar, do you know where the sun sets? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. Again, you shouldn't have said that. He said, it goes and prostrates underneath Allah's throne. First of all, yes. Yes. This is the correct hadith. This is the correct hadith. It is the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, as we can see, and it clearly conflicts with the verse that speaks of Dhul Qarnain's perception. The words of the Prophet, peace be upon him, are clear, and it is quite obvious that he's speaking of a reality and not a reality. Do you see this donkey? It is reality that the sun goes every day. Explain how the sun set. This is reality. <laughs> so they made a video to refute the guy, but the fact now it's the opposite. It is reality. And what is the reality? What do you know where the sun goes? Brother? This is a reality. Did you hear it? The hadith is true. It's correct. It's accepted by him. And the, yes, the prophet is explaining a reality. What is the reality? The sun goes every day, prostrate itself under the throne of Allah and asks for permission to come back. Do you see it? This is the donkey who can refute me. He just admitted that Islam is a flat earth religion. He just admitted that he's a prophet describing what is reality in Islam, which the sun going every day from the east to the west. And this is how it disappears every day. It is reality. When Muhammad asked the question, at what time? At the time of the sunset. What was the question? Do you know where the sun set? Do you know where the sun set? Where? You see, guys, the question? Where? Now he will say it's not, uh, he cannot say that. He cannot say it's not, he cannot say it's metaphorical. Now it's his, he said reality. Reality, he said that. Where? Where is the location? Right? Where is the location? When you say where, where the sun set, it is a location, not when. This is not when, this is where. What the answer is? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. This was Muhammad, he speak for Allah. He said, it goes. Who is the one is going? The sun. Where the sun is going? To set. Where it set? Underneath Allah's throne. And this is how Muhammad explained the sunset. Do we need to argue with those donkeys anymore? I mean, be honest. If you are a Muslim watching this, he just admitted, he agreed, this is the correct hadith, and the Prophet is explaining a reality. It's not me who said that, it's his words. I said to you, I will show you from his own words what is enough to prove that Islam is a fraud. This is the reality. Let me play the video again. Maybe I was, uh, uh, because Muhammad, he said the reality that shaitan, he pee in your ears. Maybe Satan, he pee in my ears. It's, it's, this is the reality, brother. This is true. True. A proven scientifically, Satan, he pee in your ears. And this is the wax you hear in your ears. You have in your ears. So, w what you said again, please explain to us. What, what? It speaks of Dhul Qarnain's perception. The words of the... You see, it is Dhul Qarnain perception. Where in the Quran, doesn't say that. Nowhere in the Quran, it was Allah reporting what he found. Cowards, sons of Muta. Now, listen carefully. Prophet, peace be upon him, are clear, and it is quite obvious that he's speaking of a reality mm -hmm. and not a perception. Redvan, get it through your skull. <laughs> he speak of reality, that the sun goes every day and at the throne of Allah, and this is how Muhammad explained where the sun goes. <laughs> Prophet, peace be upon him, refutes your understanding. He refute the prophet. He refute the sun goes every day. He refute you, you idiot. The prophet he refute your understanding. Who refute the prophet refuted you? Of the verse, he refutes it. Not a twenty first century Muslim scholar. He, the prophet, refutes it.
Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when I say that Muslims, when they make videos to refute us, it is a priceless. And if you see the comment, look, look, this guy, the potato, Ali Dawa, the coward, son of Muta, Ustaz Farid, he call him Ustaz. Sometime, the, uh, 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 it is sitting prostrate dead argument in the murky water. You see how they make mockery? The stupid, you should, make, you should ask him to take this video down, you donkey. He just admitted that the prophet, he tell us where the sun goes. And he, agree, he agreed that this is a reality. Is it reality that the sun goes every day under the throne of Allah? And this is explained, the sun said. Is that reality? Yes, the prophet, he refuted you. This is the correct hadith. It is the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, as we can see, and it clearly conflicts with the verse that speaks of Dhul Qarnayn's perception. The words of the Prophet, peace be upon him, are clear, and it is quite obvious that he's speaking of a reality and not a perception. Ridvan, get it. <clears throat> he speak of reality, not perception. Who is a Muslim when I leave Islam now? This is reality. Do you know where the sun set? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. He said, it goes. Who goes? The sun. Who is explaining the reality? Muhammad. Who agree with the hadith? Fifi. What he agree with? That this is reality, that the sun goes. And this is how the sun set. That is reality and the prophet refuted you, you idiot. I mean, do you want more refutation? What's wrong with you? It's clear, it's clear like the sun. The prophet refuted you. And not only that, the prophet, he says, and this is how, and this is the meaning that the sun runs into a fixed course. Do you see it? The hadith says, Muhammad explained a verse in the Quran, the sun runs into a fixed course, and this is every day, the sun is running from the east to the west, sitting under the throne of Allah, asking for Allah permission. This is reality. Brother, you are hilarious. How many Muhammadan will leave Islam now? Can they say this hadith is weak? Can they say this hadith is rejected? They cannot. We have now the biggest scholar in Islam who don't even have high school in Islam. Explaining to us how the sun runs to a fixed course every day. The sun goes, brother. Do you know where the sun set, brother? Do you know? Actually, there's a more hadith explaining uh, more stupid things let me show you more we will go back to fifi don't worry i mean we will we have more to laugh at i mean we're not done with this potato oh, by the way i don't like to make videos about him because it's just just shallow stupid and they are fraud look at this uh, <clears throat> this is sahir bukhari too and here, he cannot say he, he refused this one because he agreed with this one, actually. It says here, he said it goes, i.e., travel, till it's prostrate itself underneath the throne and takes a permission to rise again. Rise again. Is he going to say, brother, is the word wajadaha is the same as somebody says he found love? We're talking about a physical star coming down raising up so the sun goes every day at the time of the sunset go under the throne of allah and prostrate itself under the throne and then she asks permission which means the sun talk she the sun is a muslim to rise again and it's permitted and then at the time when come it will be about to prostrate itself but its pr uh, uh, prostration will not be accepted and would ask permission to go back in the in its course but it will not be permitted to go back what in its course what is the course every day going from the east to the west read it 
but it will not be permitted and then it will be ordered to return whence it has come so it will rise from the west do you see it this is how muhammad explained the sun rising and the sun setting the sun came from the west the sun come where from the west allah will tell the sun at the end of the time okay no no don't go to the east go back where you come from last time you came to me where you come from you come from the west do you see it and he agree that this is a true hadith and the prophet is explaining reality do i need to answer those videos anymore i mean this one is enough to prove muhammad a fraud right what do you think any muslim have a comment did I say he accept this hadith or he said that? Did he say this is reality or he said that? Did he say this is how it is? This is not from prescription, perception of Azul Qurnayn. <laughs> and in the Quran, nowhere it says that he, he thought, I mean, can't Allah he say he thought the sun set in murky water? But forget about the sun set in murky water now. Forget about Muhammad saying the same exact statement that the sun set in murky water, which is very embarrassing, which they are trying to deny it. But what about this? What we will do with this? He agree with it. I cannot resist. I want to play. I don't know how many people will be your fan now. Say again, what about this hadith? I want to hear you. Speaks of Dhul Qarnayn's perception. Perception, huh? The words of the Prophet, peace be upon him, are clear. Clear. And it is quite obvious that he's speaking of a reality. Obvious. It's obvious he speaks of reality. Every day the sun goes to the east, to the west is reality. Ask for permission to come back from the east is reality. <laughs> and not a perception. Reality, not perception. Muslims hear it? This is reality. Reality that the sun goes every day from the east to the west. Reality, the sun goes under the throne. Reality, the sun asks for permission. Reality, Allah will ask Allah at the end of the time to go back from where it came from, which is the west. This is reality. Any Muslim is listening? So this video is made to refute a person laughing at the sun sat in murky water. But now we are laughing more because just admit it, that Muhammad is a fraud, he is a stupid, he do not know that the sun goes nowhere. And he just said, this is not something he thought or as a vision, or let us say it appeared look like it. He did not say, oh, uh, as if, as they add in the Quran, he said, this is reality. I, I wanna hear it again because we are not smart like you, we are so fast. The words of the Prophet, peace be upon him, are clear, and it is quite obvious that he's speaking of a reality mm -hmm. and not a perception. Ridvan. It's not perception. It is reality, brother. It is not a perception. It is reality. The sun goes every day and the throne of Allah asks for permission to come back. It is reality. The sun travel, i.e. travel. It is reality. <laughs> Get it through your skull that the Prophet, peace be upon him, refutes your understanding of the verse. <laughs> you know, guys, I am talking about this garbage religion for many, many years in my life. But I cannot stop laughing as if I'm hearing things for the first time. Honestly, each time I hear those donkeys, I feel I laugh from my heart. As if I am just hearing it for the first time. Because this is the most comedian, stupid religion. I mean, this God, obviously, he is not only a fraud. He is the devil. He did not even choose the right one to defend him. I mean, this is the guy, Allah inspired this guy to make this video to refute us. And then this guy, he got Allah busted. How you can explain that to us? Hmm? 
how you can explain that to us? I mean, if I pay this guy, what what you Muslim, you should ask now yourself. Maybe this guy is paid by a Christian prince. This guy, he made video saying that there's a guy he left Islam in my uh, life on air, and uh, he is not a Muslim. He's a friend. He's a Muslim. He know him. I told him, okay, why you don't go and make a video, get him busted? The coward. He will not do that. They can't explain why people are leaving Islam in my channel life. You are the one who's helping me. I got way more subscribers by the help of the Muslims. And now, how many Muslims will take, how many Christians will take this video, will cut this part where you are saying this is reality, and everybody will be laughing at your prophet and at you. And by the way, why you put your beard for us? What is that? Brother? Beardo? underneath Allah's throne. First of all, yes, this is the correct hadith. Yes. It is the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, as we can see, and it clearly conflicts with the verse that speaks of Dhul Qarnayn's perception. The words of the Prophet, peace be upon him, are clear, and it is quite obvious that he's speaking of a reality and not a perception. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like it is Samba time. Reality. Yes, it is reality. Absolutely. The sun dance with us. The sun is going to dance with us. The sun goes. I mean, come on. The sun goes. The sun goes, the sun goes, the sun goes, it is reality. The sun goes, the sun goes, the sun goes, it is reality. Yes, it does go. It is reality though. Trust me, trust me it is. I mean, it's proven to be scientifically true. Hello? Absolutely, brother. This is true. Absolutely, it's a reality. This is reality, hello? La, 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 la. This is reality, you idiot. And this is a video having all this comment, brother. Allahu Akbar, brother. I love it how there is only one dislike. Actually, I will give you a like life on air for this video. Here we go. In front, actually, I'm not signing this page here. I'm using a different browser. There's, I'm not signing in to give you a like. Uh, you idiot. You idiot. The prophet describing reality. How many people will laugh at your prophet for the coming century because of this video? I want to hear it again. I cannot stop. Sorry. Tempting. It is the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, as we can see, and it clearly conflicts with the verse that speaks of Dhul Qarnayn's perception. The words of the prophet, peace be upon him, are clear, and it is quite obvious that he's speaking of a reality and not a perception. Stop. I have to sing. But I don't know what music fit with this. Uh... Reality. It is reality time. The sun is running. It's going faster and faster. It's going to stop very soon. And at the throne of Allah. Yes, run. Run, run, don't stop. Go there, Mr. Sun, Mrs. Sun. It is reality. We cannot deny it. It's a proven. It is the truth. It is there. It is not rejected. Stop. I mean, why I am even playing the music without your voice? Hold on. I mean, this is not even fair. You are the author, man. Hadith. It is the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, as we can see, and it clearly conflicts with the verse that speaks of Dhul Qarnayn's perception. The words of the Prophet, peace be upon him, are clear, and it is quite obvious that he's speaking of a reality and not a perception. Made fun. Get it through your skull. And the Prophet, peace be upon him,
But Vaughn's hold on, hold on, hold on. Because of what he uh, uh, I need, I need, I need to do just adjustment. Sorry, I'm not a good DJ. Uh, sorry, I, I guys, I, I apologize. Like I, I got my uh, DJ, uh, uh, you know, certificate of uh, certificate from Zibril. So uh, you cannot hear him very clear. Okay, let's do this, brother. Again, uh, brother, genius, genius, Fifi. Tell us more. Hold on. Narrated by Abu Dhar. Once I was with the Prophet in the mosque at sunset time. The Prophet said, O oh, Abu Dhar, do you know where the sun sets? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. Again, you shouldn't have said that. He said, it goes and prostrates underneath Allah's throne. First of all, yes, this is the correct hadith. It is the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, as we can see, and it clearly conflicts with the verse that speaks of Dhul Qarnayn's perception. The words of the Prophet, peace be upon him, are clear, and it is quite obvious that he's speaking of a reality, and not a perception. Medvan, get it through your skull that the Prophet, peace be upon him, refutes the understanding of the verse. He refutes it. Not a 21st century Muslim scholar. He, the Prophet, refutes it. Okay? Now that we've gotten all that muddy spring stuff out of the way, we can finally discuss the meaning of this hadith. But Vaughn sees this hadith as silly because of what he projects on. <laughs> hey, there he is. He, the Prophet, refuted you. He, the Prophet refuted you, not a scholar from the 22nd century. It is he, the Prophet, refuted you. How he refuted you? The sun goes every day and sit under the throne of Allah. The throne, the sun goes and travel. Brother, it's a proven. He refuted you. You're an idiot. It's so clear. Like the sky is clear. The sun is clear, brother. Hey, hold on. We get a call up. Brother Tita. I'm so proud of my brother, Mithid Farid. Mithid Farid is very intelligent. And actually, he is the most smart with him. And I have to admit that nobody can speak like a brother Farid. And actually, he made many videos and he got the Christian person. And another example, the brother Farid here is getting them all that. I mean, it's very clear. The Prophet reviewed them. Listen to our brother when he say how the Prophet reviewed them. Listen again, brother. Listen again. Play, Christian Prince, I threatened you. I challenge you to play the video again, brother. Play it if you are a man. I challenge you. The Prophet, he refuted you. Brother Farid, you got my full support, brother. Genius, you are truly a genius. And it clearly conflicts with the verse that speaks of Dhul Qarnayn's perception. The words of the Prophet, peace be upon him, are clear, and it is quite obvious that he's speaking of a reality and not a perception. Redvan. Get it through your skull that the Prophet, peace be upon him, refutes your understanding of the verse. He refutes it. Not a 21st century Muslim scholar. He refuted. He refuted. It's been refuted. The sun, it goes. It goes. It's on the front of you. All scientists agreed. The sun goes every day. I eat travel. Till it's put straight itself under the throne of Allah and take permission to rise again. He refuted you. The Prophet refuted you. I do not need to refute you. The Prophet did it. Who did it? The Prophet did it. This is authentic hadith. It's approved. And yes, and yes, the Prophet refuted you. Yes. If you hear how they say yes, you think this guy, he found like a treasure. He gets so excited suddenly. And yes, yes, the prophet refuted you. <laughs> what is that, man? This is the most amazing refutation ever. This is how the prophet refuted us. Explaining where the sun goes and the sun movement. And you agree? And yes, the Prophet refuted us. And the, the funny, Mimi Hijab, he copied this video. 
and he posted in his channel and the title is annihilation refutation to the apostate prophet and then they annihilate that guy that's it the guy he cannot even move that's it i mean you, you, you killed that guy how he, what he can say after this yes get it through your skull you idiot <laughs> Those are the ones the Muslim they say they are refuting me. I mean, we check one of their videos and we are dying laughing. What about we check the rest? And now can this guy he deny that he agree that he's a prophet, he is speaking of reality? Can he say I did not say that, CP? Okay, maybe you are deaf, Muslims. But it's recorded. And people will download the video, it's going to be all over now. How many times I did play it for you? Why are you not listening? Oh, they don't hear it. They hear only what they want. Say it again, brother, Fifi, sister. Sorry, I call him brother. I should not do that. He will be offended. Okay. It is the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, as we can see. Yes. And it clearly conflicts with the verse that speaks of Dhul Qarnayn's perception. The words of the Prophet, peace be upon him, are clear. And it is quite obvious that he's speaking of a reality and not a perception. Redvan, get it through your skull that the Prophet, peace be upon him, refutes your understanding of the verse. He refutes it. <coughs> there is a Muslim when I call me. His name is Nazim. Where is the Muslim? Tell me, tell me that you are a Muslim, my friend. I will take your call. Where is the guy, Nazim? <coughs> You want to call me Mr. Nazim? <coughs> you want to call me? Where is Nazim? Okay, we will take call from Nazim as long as you want to call me. Okay, uh, uh, text me Nazim, I will call you. Text me. Until now, I don't see anything from you. Who is a Muslim on a call and tell me what do you think about your brother Farid agreeing that the Prophet here refuted us by statement that the sun goes every day from the east to the west. And this is supposed a refutation. Who is a Muslim when I agree? Life on air. Any Muslim agree? Any Muslim agree? Not even one Muslim agree? That's weird. So yes, the Quran teach flat earth and he confirmed that. Yes, Muhammad, he confirmed that the sun goes. It's not the earth going around itself. And yes, the Muslims now, they cannot say that this hadith is not trustworthy and not accepted. We heard them saying, those are the one who defend Islam supposedly, right? So what do you do? You will say they are paid by me? My friend, we are not talking about the dead aunt of Muhammad now. For, why you change the topic? Why we keep jumping from here to there? Focus with us. Who is a Muslim would like to call us? Anyone? What happened to this guy? He said he want to call me. I mean, you see that the, the problem is that people are shallow. They are shallow when they read the Quran. They are shallow when they read the Hadith. And they are shallow when they hear Muslims. Muslims themselves, they condemn the Muhammad and he, they expose him. Just listen carefully for what they say. How many people watch this video and the Muslim, they are giving him like, Allahu Akbar brother, Allahu Akbar brother. Ustaz Farid, sitting prostrate, dead argument in a murky water. This is Muslim supporting. This is Ali Dawah the Pupu. Uh, Ali Dawah did not 
notice how stupid what he said because he is the same, the same garbage. Zubair, Redvan, actually love garbage, brother. I love how there is only one dislike. Redvan and his muddy mind. <laughs> This is the guy you are supporting? Yes, the prophet, he described reality. What? Like what, what? And honestly, if this guy is not very well known by the Muhammadan, they will say he, he is paid by me, he's the Muslim. Do you remember the Sheikh of the Shia in USA who debated me? If you go and see the comment underneath those who speak Arabic, they will see it says that this is paid by Christian Prince. This guy is very well known, he's a Sheikh, big Sheikh. You have a mosque, the biggest mosque in Michigan. He's paid by me. Uh, I don't know. I'm getting tempted to read again with the music, with the, without the music. I cannot. I cannot resist. Hold on. As we can see, and it clearly conflicts with the verse that speaks of Dul Qarnain's perception. The words of the Prophet peace be upon him are clear, and it is quite obvious that he's speaking of a reality. Reality. Perception. Yes, brother. Edvan. Get it through your skull that the Prophet, peace be upon him, refutes, refutes you understanding of the verse. Of the verse. He, refutes it. he refutes it. Not a 21st century not, Muslim scholar. Not. He, he the Prophet, the prophet refutes, refutes it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now you understand why this guy, the coward, he will not give me his Skype to call him, and he will not call me. I mean, which one you choose? Give me your Skype, you potato, and I will call you. I will call you. I will call you. You go live in your channel. You have no excuse. Coward. Nobody there. Nobody there. Nobody there. No. Well, you guys, you can take this video and make uh, editing for it and make like echo if you want, if you like. Because Muslim, they like echo, by the way. You go to Muslim chat rooms, they will say like Muhammad, the guy says, brothers and sisters, sisters, says, assalamu alaikum, 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 salam, 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 salam. Sister Amina there, brother, sister, please take your picture from the profile file, 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 because it's haram, 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 haram. But if you can send me your picture, brother, sister, blah, 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 blah. They love echo. This is how they refute us. The sun goes every day, and the prophet, he explained in reality. Uh, let us play the video to the end. It's almost there. Uh. He, he springs stuff out of the way. We can finally discuss the meaning of this hadith. Ridvan sees this hadith as silly because of what he projects upon the prophet, peace be upon him. In his mind, the son probably grew a pair of hands and legs in order to prostrate. Rudvan thinks the modern science. You see the stupidity. I mean, what this is prostrate is going under Allah's throne. The hadith is so clear. It's an act of worship. And here you need to ask yourself, you idiot. How the son is going to prostrate to God? Is it a living creature? Actually, according to Islam, yes. If we go in the Quran, we will find the following verse. <clears throat> Chapter 33, verse number 33. It says that Allah, you offer the heavens and the earth and the mountains he offered them Islam. He offered them his trust. But they refused to undertake it. Being afraid therefore, but man undertook it and he was indeed unjust and foolish. Do you see it? The Quran and Islam teach that those are creatures. The sun is a creature. The moon is a creature. The mountain is a creature. 
and Allah he spoke to his creatures and he ordered them and he even offered them Islam and they refuse do you see it so when you say the sun goes and prostrate you are confirming that the sun worship Allah literally and the Quran saying Allah he offer them and they reject literally otherwise how they can reject you explain to me how the mountains will reject how the sun will reject reject what do they have a brain in Islam yes are you going to me to say as if it is it doesn't say that do you see the stupidity let us finish this video because it became a movie boring one even though it's funny <laughs> science was able to disprove this understanding but to be honest this was not the correct understanding in the first place the quran affirms that stars and trees both prostrate to allah ta'ala see it both they prostrate to allah after all, surely the Arabs didn't observe trees growing arms and legs in order to prostrate, which means that the Arabs held the view that there was a metaphysical element in play. Furthermore, if we were to apply an advanced projection, the sun would be going under the flat earth in order to prostrate under the throne. Hold on, but isn't it him who agree that Allah prophet when he said the sun goes he was still in reality do you see the stupid it is you who said this happening it is you who said that the sun goes every day and you agree with your prophet saying he described reality the sun goes from this direction from the east to the west you agree with the hadith you idiot and then the hadith says, we'll ask for permission to come back and rise from the east. So you explain to me how it's going to rise from the east. Guys, do you see the stupidity? He's making cartoon to help us. How the sun now will go and rise from the east? The only way to do it is to go from here. Because the hadith says that this is, will keep happening every day until in the judgment day Allah will not give a permission to the son to go back from the east but he will say to her go back where you came from which is here the west and this is how the sun will appear from the west read the hadith <laughs> guys do you see the stupidity he agreed with it the idiot, he agree with it. Isn't it you who agree with the hadith and saying, yes, the prophet refuted you, refuted you by what? By this hadith. This hadith. Do you know where the sun goes? At the time of the sunset, I replied, Allah and Apostle know better. He says, it goes, I eat travel. I eat travel. So who is traveling? The sun. Muhammad continues saying, till it prostrate itself underneath Allah throne. So the sun keep moving, keep moving until it arrive under Allah throne. Okay. And then it take permission to rise again. So this is this is what this is the position of setting. Where it's set in the west. And it is permitted. Then at the time will come, which means the judgment day what will be about to prostrate as usual itself but its prostration will not be accepted and will ask permission to go on its course but will not be permitted but it will be ordered to return whence it has come and so will rise from the west do you see it the sun come from the west so the cartoon you showed us your donkey is exactly what your prophet saying. Guys, did you notice? 
The cartoon he made to make fun of the apostate prophet, in fact, he is making fun of his prophet because this is exactly what Muhammad said. The sun goes every day from the east to the west and then will be permitted to go again to rise from the east. But in order to go again, rise from the east, she have not to go in the same course which they, where it's coming from, which is the west. Only in the judgment day, Allah will order the sun to go where it came from, where it came from, from the west. Where it come from, to who? To Allah. So Allah, he live in the west. Read carefully. And this is the cartoon of Sister Fifi explaining that to us. Let us play the cartoon again. Perfect. Beautiful, beautiful, brother. Thank you for the cartoon. To Allah Ta'ala, after all. Surely, the Arabs didn't observe trees growing arms and legs in order to prostrate, which means that the Arabs held the view that there was a metaphysical element in play. You see, it's stupid. We are talking about the sun going. Your prophet said the sun goes. Goes, goes, your donkey. Goes. And he described that as an act of worship, your donkey. So there is no need for arms and legs to prostrate for the sun. If the sun is going to do the act of prostration by sitting under the throne of Allah. Donkey. Play. Furthermore, if we were to apply an advanced projection. Not Radwan projection. This is what you said. You agree with this already. You agreed that the sun goes every day from the east to the west. And the video is there, and we just play it. Everybody is laughing at you. Why you are saying this is what Radwan he say? This is what you just said. You agreed with your prophet when he said, where the sun goes, Abu Dhar, he says, Allah and his apostle know best. He says, it goes every day from this point to this point. You agreed already. And you said, yes. The prophet describing reality. So this is the west. This is the east. And this is what you agree with, that the sun, i.e. travel. And the sun will be keep doing this. Going under Allah throne. And then every day ask for permission to rise again. So the sun will go where? Have to go under the flat earth and rise from the east because the sun cannot go back from the west for this is will happen only which means the sun cannot go in this direction just to make it clear for those who they are maybe not understanding the sun will not be allowed to go in this direction to go back to the east no because that will make it appear from the west if it goes from here you understand if the sun go back from the same direction here, that will make it appear from the west. This is will happen only in the judgment day and the hadith is so clear. So yes, the cartoon is perfectly matched with the hadith which he agree upon. And this guy is stupid to the point. He did not notice that he just humiliated his stupid prophet, the cult leader, the child molester, the criminal, the killer, the thief, the one they accuse him stealing underwear, the one who slept with his own son wife, the one his wife found him in the bed having boom boom with the slave, and he have no dignity. And you agree with this already. Let me remind you what you said, potato. You said, yes, the prophet refuted you. He is describing reality. You forgot. I mean, how short your memory? Isn't this hadith describing reality? Abu Dhar, do you know where the sun sets? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. Again, you shouldn't have said that. He said, it goes and prostrates underneath Allah's throne. First of all, yes, this is the correct hadith. It is the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, as we can see. And it clearly conflicts with the verse that speaks of Dhul Qarnain's perception. False way it conflicts. It says the sun go and prostrate. How it conflicts. And we show you the hadith, you liar, that the throne of Allah is above the water. Liar.
We showed it already. Huh? We showed the hadith where it says Allah's throne is above the water. Let us show it again. Coward. So how this is conflict? Huh? How this is conflict? Let us show the hadith. Oh, on. Ah, conflict, huh? Ah, it's conflict, brother. Mm. It's conflict, brother. Is that Sahih hadith or this is weak hadith? This is Sahih Muslim. Is a throne above the water. You see? All those hadith, this is Bukhari. Is a throne is above the water. You see it? The coward he denied that the Muslim believe in such a thing. So the throne is above the water. Let us make it more clear using his cartoon. I will use your cartoon if you don't mind. Thank you for the cartoon. It's priceless. So the throne of Allah is here. And here there is water. Who said that, Muhammad? And we show you, we showed you a Sahih Hadith. The sun goes every day from the east to the west. And prostrate under Allah throne. Here. And then Allah, or the Son, will ask Allah for permission to rise again from the east. Allah will give it permission. How the Son will go goes, the Hadith explain. Because the Son will be ordered at the end of the time only to go from where it came from, which is the west. So the Son, in order to go back, it cannot go back from here in this direction back. Because that will make the Son appear from the west. The Son have to go under down the ground, for the earth is a flat and come from here and that will make it appearing again from the east until one day and that is in the end of the time the sun will ask for permission to go back and the sun will be order not to go back and rise from the east rather to go and back from where it came from which is the west so the sun will go in this direction. And the hadith confirm that. I mean, how clear we can make it? Go where? Where you came from. And the hadith mentioned the west. Go where you came from. Came from to who? To Allah. So the sun goes here. Go all the way to the west, under the throne of Allah, and this is a routine we'll do every day, until judgment day, and then Allah will not allow the sun to go back from what it used to do every day, but he will order the sun to go back from where it came from, which is the west. What do you think? And the hadith in front of us, confirming every single word of what he said and what we said, and he agree with it. We agree with it. He can't say it's not true now. <clears throat> uh, a Muslim, he says, Christian prince was silenced. Who silenced me? Here we go. My Skype is open. Why you don't do it? You always Muslim silence me. I don't know how this happened. 
I was seeing Muhammad Hijab destroying this guy and I was sinus. Yeah, he muted me and he hung up on me, you idiot. <laughs> and we get busted. He cut my videos, edit my video. You see the cowards, they don't dare to debate me, so they prepare a video cut off. Answer, did you say that? Hang up on him. Coward, son of Muta. They are afraid to debate my toes. This is why they will not let me talk. Cowards. And now, guys, look at this. I'm very thankful for the Muslim videos because they help us really to expose Muhammad and show you that Islam is nothing but a stupid. As long as they agree with this hadith, I want you to be honest, any one of you. Doesn't matter if you are an atheist, you are a Christian, you are a Jew, you are a Hindu. I will post the hadith for you link, the link. And this is the one he agree with and he said, the prophet described reality. Read it and tell me, is that reality? Or this is the most stupid statement ever. They agree with me that Muhammad is a fraud. They agree. They said this is true hadith. He said the Prophet refuted us. How he refuted us? And look, Muhammad, even he quoted the Quran, and he said this is what Allah meant by his statement. And the sun runs in its fixed course for a term. What is the fixed course of the term? Sun goes every day from the east to the west, prostrate under Allah's throne, and then Allah He ordered the sun to go back from the west, not from the east. Read it. And look how the Muslim they change the topic. Look, look at this. Look, just to show you how they get him, they, how they get humiliated by their questions. Guys, look at this. A Muslim asking question ran away from. The disaster we have in front of us. Do this guy worship three gods? Where is, where is the text? Do you believe in three gods? <laughs> he will not answer us how stupid he's a prophet and how the Quran says the sun set in murky water and how the Quran says the earth is flat and how the Quran says the sperm is coming from the backbone and how the Quran says the, the, the women have a sperm coming from her ribs. Do you believe in three God? No, Abdul, we don't believe in three God. Can you give us the name of the donkey he said that to you? Can you show me one single verse in the Bible says we believe in three gods? Change the topic. Now he will change the topic. He will talk about a different story. They are a bunch of cowards and they have no dignity. In the speed of light, they will change the topic. What happened to this guy? He said, you want to call me? Not even a single text. What happened? Cowards. Let me log off then. How many of you is going to download the video? You can cut it pieces. I mean, the video became long. You can cut the part. I'm sure many of you are good in that. You can cut a part and let everybody laugh at this idiot agreeing that this is what his prophet said and this is reality. And look, not a single Muslim dare to call and say I agree with Fifi. Not a single Muslim, Muhammadan, dare to call and say, I agree with Fifi. Find single contradiction of the Quran. We just showed you one, you idiot. The whole Quran. Okay, what about this? You call me and you find me one chapter in the Quran does not have contradiction. Of your choice. Show me? Okay, I will show you. Uh, let me, uh, Mako, 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 uh, are, you, are you an Iraqi? I'm a cow, a cow. I thought Mako, okay. Listen, I will ask you a very simple question, and the answer will explain to us that Muhammad is a stupid. And free, feel free to answer me, okay? 
Which one Allah created first, the trees or the stars? Macau. Which one Allah created first, the trees or the stars, according to the Quran, brother? Any Muslim can answer us? Well, I'm showing you the contradiction. I want the answer first. Which one Allah created first, brother, according to the Quran? The trees or the stars, brother? Okay, I will make it simple for you, brother. Which one Allah created first, brother? The mountains or the stars, brother? Is it hard to answer? He will not answer. Because the second he answer, he will show you the contradiction of the Quran. He will not answer. Uh, okay, I'm showing you, but I want your help. You need to help me. I mean, come on. According to the Quran, which one Allah created first? The mountains, the trees, the water, or the stars? Which one? Help me. Don't ask questions. So how we can have a conversation if I cannot ask questions? Okay, as long as you are not going to help me, I will have to help myself, brother. Okay. Huh. What we can do? You are not very helpful, by the way. I'm so upset from you. I thought you are going to help me, Lily, but you are not doing that for, uh, for some reason, you know? I'm not sure really why you are doing that. I was really expecting you, uh, you know, uh, to give us a clear answer. Okay. But as long as you, know, you don't want that, we have to go and uh, do it ourselves. Uh, give, me, uh, give, me a, give me a minute, brother. Hmm. Chapter 2, verse number 29. According to this verse, which one Allah created first, brother? He created everything in the earth first, and then he went to the sky and he created the stars, or he created the stars first, and then he created everything in the earth. Chapter 2, verse number 29. What do you think, brother? <laughs> The verse is so clear. It says, It is he who had created for you all things that are in earth. And then, by the way, not moreover, thumma. Thumma is a statement in Arabic. You say it for something happened a way long after. Actually, there's a Muslim guy. He teach Arabic. He have a class teaching you about how to use thumma. You can go watch him. How to use thumma. And he said to you, the difference between thumma and other words is something happened there is a period of time between them not right away and this is a muslim who trying to convert people to islam so the word here is thumma so thumma stawa ila sama fasawahunna sab'u samawat and then he went up to the sky and he made them seven skies so which one allah first finished the answer please who want to help me I mean, the verse in the front of you, Macau, even this one you will not answer? Well, I'm showing you the contradiction. Here it's a claiming that everything created first, it was everything in earth. And then Allah, he finished, he finished what is in the, in the sky after. <laughs> okay, let's go to a different verse in the Quran. All right. <clears throat> Brother, read with me, brother. This is a chapter 41, brother. It says, says, Is that you deny him who created the earth in two days? And then he joined, you know, you join equal to him. He said, On the earth mountains, which means the Quran teach that Allah, he placed mountains on the top of the earth. 
height above it, and he bestowed blessing on the earth, and measured therein all things to be given them nourishment, like grass, trees, etc. In due preparation, in four days, okay, now we have, we have two days to create the earth, verse number nine, four days to create whatever in the top of the earth. And look at the false translation here, they say moreover, that's false. It is, and after that, thumma, cowards, liars, and after that, look here, they are trying to make it night after, and then, then, uh, what then? It's after that, right? This is what then mean. That's mean this has happened after. Change the translation. Just to show you how the fraud work in this world. And then, then he lifted himself to heaven, lifted himself. <laughs> then, which means it's happened after. Let us change the translation. Maybe this guy is uh, taking, uh, you know, uh, like maybe I paid him. Maybe he's not a true uh, Muslim, maybe he's a fraud Muslim, Muhammad Biktal. Then he turned, then to heaven. Uh -huh. Okay, we stuck with then, let us see. Uh, let us see uh, uh, different translation, brother. Uh, let us see which one you want, which one you want. Abdullah Darwish, let us see Abdullah Darwish, brother. Then he will to heaven, will. <laughs> so all of them they are confirming but in Arabic actually it's more it's not then it is after that after that I'm sure you will find some translations they are coming with after that this is guy his name is Khattab then look all of them they are saying then they feel like they are copying from each other brother uh, Shakir let us see Shakir brother then we stuck with then all of them there but anyway then it says it's the same it's getting us the clearer proof that this has happened after he finished the earth then he went to the sky then okay Muhammad Asad and he it is who appealed his design to the sky this guy he took then totally there's no then there's no after that <laughs> This guy, he ate it, all of it. It's gone. He 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 uh, he used it as a uh, as a uh, maybe uh, like a, a candies or something. He he lick it. Then he turned to the sky. So all the verses saying that Allah after this he went to the sky to do what? The sky was a smoke. Do you see it? Are you there, Amako? The earth is finished. He created the earth, he made everything in the top of the earth, and now the earth, after he finished the earth, then he went to the sky, and then now the sky was a smoke, there was nothing there. Are you there, Mako? Okay, so the sky was a smoke. And then he ordained them seven heaven in two days, and inspired each heaven it is mandate and then he created the lambs <laughs> okay so based on this chapter chapter 41 verse number 9 and 10 and 11 and you can change to any translation you like you you, you give me a translation name I will put it for you on the screen doesn't matter what you like do hmm? you name it I will put it on the screen honestly just give me a translation you like According to all translations, Allah created the lamps, the stars, the last thing in chapter 41. Verse number 9, Allah created the earth in two days. Verse number 10, Allah placed everything in the top of the earth, mountains, trees, etc. in four days. And then Allah, he went up to the heaven and the heaven was a smoke. Read carefully, it was a smoke, there was nothing. And then he completed and he fishing the, uh, finished the heaven. He made them seven in two days. And then he made the lamps. The last thing. Okay. Let us go to different chapter in the Quran. And you will see your stupid prophet. 
he recite the Quran speaking in total different opposite order of the creation of the earth. Read carefully. What are ye the more difficult to create? The heaven above Allah has construct, constructed, on high he has raised a conobi. It is night doth he endow with darkness and its splendor, which means he created the day and the night and the sun. And earth, after that, he made it flat. And after that, he put moisture and grass on the earth. And the mountains, after that, he put it in the earth. This is totally the opposite. A Muslim he will say to you all oh, here in the translation, doesn't say that, CP. Train the translation just to show you how we can get you busted. No, it says that. Read carefully. We just change the translator. Huh? We just what? Change the translator. Read carefully. Are you more difficult to create? Or it is the heaven that he constructed. He raised high, and it was equal in order. And it's night, and he covered with darkness. And afternoon he bring out with light. So now the sun is created. And after that, he spread the flat earth. And he brought forth the water and he placed the mountains so this has happened what after he finished the sky but this is totally the opposite of the chapter 41 because in chapter 41 it was the earth first who is finished and after that he made the heaven and he finished it where is the guy with the contradiction where is the guy who challenged me with the contradiction here we go. This is chapter 41. He says he knows Arabic. So what? It's even better. Here we go. Read it. It says, Thumma. Thumma stawa ila sama. Actually, you know what? Let us do this. As long as this guy he knew Arabic, why you don't call me? And actually, I believe strongly that you are a coward and you don't know Arabic. Call me. I will make you read in Arabic and I will make you translate for us. What do you think, guys? Isn't this is beautiful? To make a Muslim translate for us? You speak Arabic, brother. Do you dare? Say yes. Say yes. Do you dare? Hello? Do you do you? Do you do you? Hmm? <clears throat> Here we go. This is the Muslim website, which is very easy to get busted. Guys, look with me. I will put on the screen. This is Quran.com. This is the verse. It says, I will move my mouse in the top of the word, and the website automatically will translate the word for us. Thank you, Muslim, for this website. Priceless. Wa and the earth. Bada. Do you see? Yeah. After. Do you see the word after? After Dalika Dahaha Dahaha Do you see it? Okay. So what he did after that he made the earth flat. Let us go to the chapter. Why this chapter is not taking me up to the top? I want to see the whole chapter. How come it's showing me only from the from this place? Oh boy! How to go to the? 
have to go to go to verse. No, it's not taking me. I cannot go to the verse which before it. Hold on. <clears throat> Maybe there is a way to do that. If we go to chapter 79, here we go. Uh, okay, here we go. So let us read together. This is the chapter from the beginning. Read carefully. And this is your Muslim translation. Are you more difficult? Creation or it is the heaven Allah has constructed? He raised the, its ceiling above, and he made it. And he darkened its night and extracted its brightness, which means he made the sun. And, and, and after that, he spread the earth. And then he extracted from it the water. After that, you see the word after that? After that, describe everything after that is what happened. And then at the end, he made the firmly mountains. Okay. But this is totally the opposite of the other chapter. Where it says clearly that Allah as you see here Allah first he created the earth in two days and then he created everything in the top of the earth in four days and then after that he went to the sky and the sky was a small totally 100% the opposite any Muslim can say this is a lie just forget about this kid anyway you see, we are teaching you all. Don't get busy with this kid. You don't deserve our time. But you do. He is suffering right now. He see it in the front of his eyes. One chapter say Allah created the stars at the end, the last thing. And the other chapter saying the stars was created from the beginning. One chapter saying the last thing Allah created is the mountains the mountains read carefully what is the last thing verse number 32 the last thing is the mountains in the other verse in the other chapter the mountains was created from the beginning after he created the earth read carefully do you see the stupidity and chapter 2 verse number 29 says clearly that Allah he finished everything in the earth before he go to the heaven the Muslim he is in pain for what he is seeing what kind of God he don't remember which one he created first which one I mean the question is very simple was the mountain created from the beginning after he created the earth right away as in chapter 41 verse number 10 or it was the mountain created at the end as in chapter 79 the last thing in chapter 79 was created is the mountains the one before it is the water and the grass and the trees the one before it it was making the earth flat. The one before it, he made the dark and the light. The one before it, he raised the sky above. The one before it, he created the heaven. <laughs> this is totally the total opposite. In this chapter 41, the first thing Allah created, it was the earth. 
The second thing he did, he put mountains in the top of it. And he placed all measurement and substance, trees, etc. And then after that, he went to the sky. And the sky was a smoke, it's clear. It was a smoke. Until now, there is totally nothing. Do you see it? So, if a Muslim want to laugh about what we are showing, he is laughing at himself, not at us. It's a most clear, easy contradiction. Print the two pages, put them next to each other. Brother Adnan? Who is Adnan? Ah, all of them are kids, those are kids. Abrogated? <laughs> Any Muslim want to say anything? I mean, if this is not a clear contradiction, what is a clear contradiction then? Have you ever heard of a God? You don't remember which one created first? One chapter, I mean, make, to make it simple or clear, just check which one the tree, the, 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 the mountains created first in each chapter. Which one? Here, in chapter 41, the mountain was second thing to be created after creating the earth. Read carefully, here we go in front of you. He created the earth in two days. He placed mountains in the top of the earth. After he, This is the second step. Before even he created trees and grass and animals. Then, then he went to the sky and the sky was a smoke. So clear. Okay, we go to the other chapter. <laughs> In the other chapter, Allah finished the earth first. And then he went to the sky to finish it. This is chapter 2, verse number 29. To make it more clear, we will go to the other verse. Here the mountain created second step, and the last thing, and the sky was a smoke, so clear, and now we go to this one. Allah created first the sky, and he constructed the sky, and then he left up the sky, and then he made the night and the day, which means the sun, and after that he made the earth flat, and he brought forth the water. And after that, the mountain. The last thing he has done is the mountain. Guys, how clear we can make it. What is the last thing he has done? The mountains. In the other chapter, what was the mountain? It was step number two. And at that time, the sky was still a smoke. Any Abdul? Be honest, Muslims. Is this is a clear a contradiction or not? If you are a person who is not, let's say, your 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 brain is not able to comprehend. If you are using a computer, you can open two browsers, put them next to each other. Actually, let me do that. I will do that. I will separate this browser. Here we go. Okay, and I will put it next to the browser. All right, let us do this. What we can do, I mean, we have to do it this way. Hmm. Read with me, please. I will zoom out. The one in the left of the screen is a chapter 79. The one in the right is a chapter 41. All right. Here it says, Allah created the earth in two days, verse number nine. He created what? The earth in two days. And then after that, he made on the top of the earth firm mountains. So what is the step of the mountains is number two. Let us type number two. <clears throat> to 
mountains are number two. Okay. What is number three? The grass, the trees. Wonderful. We go to the other chapter. Which one Allah He created first? The sky. Let us zoom out more so we can capture them both. He created the heaven. And then he raised the heaven. And then he made the darkness and the afternoon and the morning. Why? With light, sun. And after that, he spread the earth. <laughs> and after that, he made water and, and, and grass. And after that, the last thing is, he made the mountains standing firm. Do you see it? But here, it's the opposite. The first, he created the earth. The second, he placed the mountain, he made the grass. The third, then, he went to the sky, and the sky was still a smoke. And then in the verse after it, verse number 12, he made, he finished the heaven by creating the stars. Read it. And then we decorated the heaven, the lowest heaven with lamps. The last thing was Allah did, it was the lamps in this chapter 41. The last thing he did, it was the mountains in chapter 79. The first thing he created in chapter 41, it was the earth in two days. And then he placed the mountain. Let's change color. Number two is the mountains created. In chapter 10 this is the second stage of creation but here the second of the second stage of a creation is different story it's not the mountains he created the sky here is the sky he made the day and the night and after that he spread the earth and he brought forth the water and posture and he said the mountain firm. I mean, how easy I can make it. I don't know what I can do. <laughs> this is the book which Muslims, they say nobody can make like it. I agree. You have to be a donkey. Yet to claim to be a prophet, but yet you don't remember what you told the people about which one created first, which one created after. Or what we would do. Huh? What you would do? Those who would download the video, you can cut this part, separate it from the other part of the video, and let everybody laugh. I'm not going to keep this video in my channel, as you know, as all my videos. So please download it as soon as we finish. And later you can do the editing, cut the video as you wish make it parts to make it smaller so where is the muslims who challenge me to show you a contradiction this is the quran you are challenging me that nobody can make like it oh be honest muslims this is the quran you are challenging us to debate about and you are saying nobody can make quran like this i agree nobody can make stupid quran like this I never heard of a prophet. He claimed to be a prophet. He's so stupid at the point he don't remember which one he said. What he said. It's very clear. Right? Any Muslim have any comment? Any Muhammadan, he have any comment? No.
No body. So my friend, don't challenge us. We laugh at your crow. And by the way, I'm a great, getting a great response for the, the, the free books I gave, like especially the Russian book, not only the Indonesian. I received a very great news about the Russian books. It's spread all over Russia. I mean, the Russian are really hungry to get such a book. And I hope soon we are working right now in the second book translation in Russian language too. Soon every single Russian will die laughing at the stupidity of Islam. Because if you open translation of the Quran in Russian language, it's false translation, as all languages. So it's really, you know, doing a great work. Churches downloading, Russian downloading from everywhere, from not only from Russia, from everywhere in the world. And nobody can stop something for free. You see the, the power of a free? Nobody can stop something for free. It take a click to download it. When, when somebody told me, but but isn't it, this is will lower your income? I mean, you will get almost zero money because you don't have people buying your books. You know, the Lord always provide us and there's people who support me and they are normal people like me and you. I mean, actually, some of them even maybe they are poor. They don't have, they have little. But the Lord always, he will provide. Which one is more important? To make m some money or save millions of people from the ugly, disgusting cult of Muhammad. The Lord always will provide us. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about that one day I will be hungry. I will not find food in my table. The Lord always will send people who will support us and they will keep us going. So I'm really happy to see the result. There's one of you actually, he offered to translate the books to Chinese, Korean. I hope he will do that. I hope it's not just a talk because that will be priceless actually to have the books in those languages. Uh, actually, he speak Thai language, he speak Korean and he speak Chinese. My books names in many languages, depending on language you speak, the deception of Allah, Quran and science and death, six and Allah, um, you know, we have many books. I'm happy for people from Indonesia, people from Malai. So Malaysia, they, they don't allow any books to enter the country against Islam. How they can stop my book now? Every single person who speaks Malai is downloading my book. Right now, there's, I mean, it's a small country, yes, but it's all over. It's all over. And just wait until I do make more books. Our coming books is going to be even more hilarious. Six of and Allah is, you know, uh, uh, once I actually, I met a brother and he told me, you always choose names for your books, which is very harsh. He said, well, like, like what? He said, deception of Allah. He said, how we can even give this book out? I mean, the name is very strong. Six and Allah. <laughs> I said, my friend, I don't care how you give it out. It's going to be out. It's going to be out. And the Muslims will help me to make it go out. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Any Muslim? Yeah, but doesn't hurt to make it in their own language too, right? In Malay language. <clears throat> we encourage all people to help us in the translation. 
because the more translation we do the better it is uh, actually I will uh, you know maybe in this coming year like you know I don't know like uh, when I can do that I want to take maybe a vacation it's not really a vacation I mean time just to write to finish the Quran translation because I believe it's very important because we don't have a single the only translation you can trust maybe until now is translation of Usama brother Usama Dakhil. Uh so I want to finish the translation of the Quran too and because I believe this is very important so the Christian they can see the truth as it is we are sick of their fabrication false translation which is not honest for a single moment Well, I, I, you know, I start translating the Quran a long time ago. But you see, uh, uh, doing what I'm doing is taking too much time of my life. And you know, when you go live on air, you just you, you cannot just go back to work again and making the book, because th this this life on air thing it takes a lot of energy. When you go live on air, especially the way I do it, I interact with every statement people they say in the chat. I go and find reference immediately. I'm ready to answer you. You see, it's not like different channels who make a video 15 minutes and post it and people make comments. Here, there's a lot of work. I don't need to prepare because I have my knowledge in my head, but having the knowledge in your head doesn't mean that that will not consume your energy and your comfort. Actually, very few people dare even to do what I do. Not because it's our fighting Islam, but because, I mean, you don't know what the person will say to you when he call you. Correct? It's a big challenge. In order to do, say, he, he call me. Call me now, life. Don't even tell me what you will call about. And still we get them busted. So imagine how big the challenge is. Sometimes people, they throw questions at you from the middle of nowhere. If you think this is easy, you are totally mistaken, even if you have the knowledge. And speaking of the knowledge, see, even, even having the knowledge not necessarily will make you able to get the answer. Because there are some people they don't have, they are not capable in fast thinking and remembering the source like you know if you ask me now about any hadith it doesn't take me really long even though i have to search for it in if it's in arabic i can find it in a second but when it says in english i have to find it to show you on the screen but even though it doesn't take really long time right but how you can find it do i remember the hadith number no because their numbers actually in english is totally number the different from the arabic and there's no way anyone can remember all the numbers so what I remember, I remember the story itself, the hadith itself. And you can imagine how much energy you have to have to do so. My friend, forget about this Adnan Nazim. Actually, if he is in the chat, block him. We open Skype to go and talk to him. He did not text me. So just tell me if he, he say he want to call me, block him. I don't have time for kids. right yeah sometimes you know people they challenge you from the middle of nowhere and you have to be ready especially you do not know what they will say and people they are afraid actually to take such a challenge to say okay call me now and ask me a question because what if they ask you a question you don't know i mean there's nobody can claim that he knows everything neither i do correct nobody knows everything it doesn't matter how much you study doesn't matter how much knowledge you have, still you are limited. But yet with our limitation, still they cannot debate us. For we have the truth, 
and I believe that the Lord always helped me. Sometimes, actually, the, you know, I, I I hear myself in videos, and I I say to myself, I mean, that's really very good. But I don't remember even I did not even think about answering, as of the Lord He is helping me. So we praise the Lord for the gift He gave us. And there is people they are gifted in something, and there is people they are gifted in something else. There is somebody, maybe some of you, they are good in drawing. I am not good in that. Use your gift. You can serve the Lord by drawing. Make cartoon. You do not need to tell people what is your name. Some people of you, maybe they are good in, you know, they have good skills in computer, like software, like 3D graphic. Take one of the stories. We have funny stories about Muhammad. Make a graphic about it. Use your gift. Some of you, they are good in languages. Translate our books. Let the, let the Lord bless you for the gift you received, you used. You see, one of the things we should be aware of that one day we will stand in the front of the Lord and we will be questions why we did not use our gift. You know what I mean? That will happen. Why you did not use your gift? What you will say? If you have a nice voice, sing for the Lord. If you play music, make a song for him. If you are good in writing, write for him. Use your gift. A woman who have no education, still she have a gift. She have children to teach, to teach them how to be decent. So when they grow, they will be decent adult. Use your gift. Don't be a crazy, lousy, who careless, who say the F word every two seconds in front of her children. God, he gave you a gift, it's called decency. Honor. He respected you. He made you equal to the church. Be equal to the church. Every single one of us, he have a gift, but the problem many of us do not notice. We have it, and many don't see it. So let us, all of us, serve the Lord, so one day we will be remembered by him. The Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. If you don't have the fruits, how you will be known? Many they say, we as a Christian saved by his grace. This is true. By the grace of the Lord. But the Lord, he said it clearly, that he will know you from your fruits. And the Bible says clearly, faith without fruits is a dead faith. So don't be a dead faith person. Let your faith glorify through you by the fruits. Be a tree who is created by God to be a tree. Be the tree. The tree is not created just to be green. The tree is created to give shade, to give fruits, to feed a human or even birds. Be a shelter. Be a nest for the good ones. So, I really feel sad when I see many Christians, they are careless. They think it's the duty of this guy and this guy to fight for Christianity. This is not true. It's your duty to fight for the truth, to save your people, to save your children. Time will, be, time will come and you will be sorry because life goes so fast. Yesterday I was a kid. 
Literally. Time goes so fast. You will not even feel it. You will be one day old, you will be 10 years old, you will be 50, you will be 60, you will be 70, you will not even feel it. And oops, you are dead. And what you did? What we did through this life. There's people who remember you after you die. Maybe for a day, two, a week. But there's people who remember you for many years to come. If I die tomorrow, or even today, and I really I don't care, I'm the last one to worry about death. My videos, my books will stay there forever. After a hundred years from now, people will download my books. Two hundred years from now, people will read my books. And you cannot deny that. They cannot delete me. My name is written up there, and my work is down in this earth. Witness for what I did. So do what should be done. Anyone have a question? Oh, and by the way, I, ha I heard a good news that Amazon, the giant company, the giant American company, is going to provide internet for the whole world. And many countries who are poor, they will get the internet almost for free. Which means if you are anywhere, it's going to be through satellite. Nobody can stop receiving free internet. They cannot filter. They cannot stop YouTube. They cannot ban anything. They cannot. So what is coming is a huge. They will launch more than 2,000 to 3,000 satellite in the sky. And this is run by Amazon company. The first service will be provided for American. That's normal, American company. And then it's going to cover the whole earth. And those who they are in a very poor location, they will get it for free. So you do not need cable. You do not need modem. The internet will be in your house. The government like it, don't like it, is going to be there. How they can stop that? Right now, they can filter. They can stop even Christian Prince Channel from appearing in Pakistan, and they did. And I showed you many emails coming from Pakistan government to YouTube. But then, that's it. It's over. It's in the sky. Well, yesterday we spoke about the, the celebration of slaughtering. You watched the video yesterday, my friend. We got them busted with that behavior. All right? Watch the video yesterday. You know, I noticed actually that people watch the last video and they don't watch the video before it. You know what I mean? If you watch the video we made yesterday, it's really important. The, the, yesterday or the day before it? I think the day before it. All right? Well, they blocked my videos too. I can show you the emails from the Pakistani government. Imagine a country have nuke. They are worried about Christian Prince videos. <laughs> All right? So anyway, Actually, you see, they, they, they block uh, uh, our videos, but they block my videos in my channel. This is why when you download my videos, they cannot do that. They cannot go after everybody and ask you to, to block it. You know what I mean? So they focus on me because this is the main channel for me. But they cannot block everybody. That's why we say, please download the videos. Right? Yeah. Uh, the world will change and it's changing so fast and Islamic countries they will turn into something else you see I was watching a woman from Saudi Arabia she's wearing no hijab she's not wearing abaya she's wearing a skirt not short skirt but a skirt 
this was impossible. Maybe many of you will say like, what a big deal. This is a country living in the dark ages for centuries. Since the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, he come to existence. This guy, he changed a lot of things. I will not be surprised that Saudi Arabia, the one we knew it as the center of Islamic world, will become a huge reason for Muslims to leave Islam. Everything is changing. You will see that Islamic fanatic, they are more located in Pakistan, not in Saudi Arabia. The Arab, they notice that this garbage have to go. It is time for it to go. All days is over. First time, uh, a bicycle came to Saudi Arabia. The Saudi police arrested the bicycle and they behead the bicycle. And they accused the bicycle to be the bicycle of the devil, the bike of the devil. <clears throat> So imagine what Saudi Arabia used to be not long time ago. Arresting the bike, not the guy, the guy of for sure to come to jail. They arrested the bike and they accused the bike. They took the bike to court. And the sheikh, he ordered the beheading guy to cut the head of the bike. Bike. So when we say Saudi Arabia today, they have a theater. This is unbelievable. Women walking without burqa, that is unbelievable. Women, they can drive cars. That is unbelievable. Many of you do not know what's happening. This is beyond imagination. Nobody can imagine that this is happening. From beheading a bike to women wearing a skirt. So you see what's happening? And not only that, actually, that now they have parties. They are inviting the singers to sing. That's impossible because Muhammad, he says, the one who play music, he will go to hell. But, and here you see the hypocrisy of the Muhammadan. As long the crown prince who controlled the country, and obviously he don't, he, he have no mercy and anyone oppose him, he will make him shish kebab literally. Nobody dare to say this is wrong. Nobody. You see the hypocrisy? This country, those countries need someone like this crown prince. And actually, I wanted him to be the king soon. Because having him as a king will change a lot of things. You will see what will happen when this guy become a king. Yeah, you will see. Uh... Well, yeah, Turkey is, you know, uh, you see, I hope that Trump will change the way he is. I don't like the way he did with Turkey. I hope after he won the election, this guy is a potato when it's come to election. He just want to be a president for four more years. So I think after he, if he won the election, I hope so, he will take action against Turkey. This guy, you know, this is the problem in the USA and all Western countries. They are for the job not for the nation, which means they are not real leaders. All what they worry about, how to be re-elected. But if he is elected now for the coming four years, that's it, this is his term. He cannot be, so he's not worried about election again, for this is the maximum he can serve, eight years. And here you will see the real face of Trump. And I hope he will change after he become a president again for the coming four years, and he will teach Erdogan how to behave. Because there's only two people they can make Erdogan a potato and a rabbit. Putin and Trump. The rest they don't count for me. Why? Because they don't have, you know, in, in Europe, there's no real leaders. You see, this is why Erdogan is showing his missiles. You know, nobody do I talk to him. Because he, he knew, he knew very well that Europe today don't have real leaders. They don't. Europe today, sadly, is running by liberals, and those liberals, anyone can change them. 
they are anti-war, they are anti-conflict, and they are, they, they, are, they are so stupid to the point they became so submissive to anything. And he understands very well. The second, the European countries, they change their leaders. You will see Turkey will go back to its size. Turkey is no match to any countries from those. But Turkey, they knew that Greece is very small, tiny country. Cyprus, Armenia, you know. Do Turkey dare to challenge Putin? Putin, he made them kiss his shoes literally after they took down one of his airplanes in Syria. Putin, he forced them even to send him four billion dollars for nothing in return. Well, North Korea, I mean, I hope this guy will die soon, the president there, and this country will come to Christ. You see, I assure you that the day North Korea president, he die and this communist country collapse as communist, the whole country will become a Christian overnight. Because already many of them, they accepted the Christ. Many of you do not know that Korean, North Korea, they listen to radio stations coming from South Korea. There's tons of them preaching the gospel. Already a lot of them leaving uh, uh, the communists and became Christians. And you know, how many of us, we thought that Soviet Union is exists forever? Over one day, overnight, the churches is full. The second people they heard that Soviet Union, you know, communist collapse, churches is full all over the place. Go to Russia and see. 60, 70 years of communist did not work. Nobody thought ever that there is one believer left. They shut down our churches. They arrested our priest. They forbid the Bible. And they teach our children communism. And then one day, communists collapse. Churches is full again. And the believers are all over Russia. And actually, I don't, know, I don't know how many of you speak Russian, but there is a great Christian writers in the Russian language. Uh, and there is some of them, their books is translated. You can search them. Amazing writers. You see the Orthodox Church in Russia, they are lucky. They have really genius Christian writers. Uh, they are scared in North Korea. Well, they are scared for now. When he die, when this criminal he die, he will go. And I can tell he is not healthy. He will he will not live for long, even if he's young. This guy, you can tell he don't do sport. He's a potato couch. He eat too much potatoes. He don't move. You know, you can tell he will not live for long. And sooner or later, maybe one of his commands they will get rid of him. This guy is crazy. I mean, this guy is 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 is, is, is mad. They are not fearing North Korea. They are fearing a madman who have nukes. You know? One mistake, this man, he can turn his area to the cave time. Right? <clears throat> uh, so anyway, I went to South Korea, as I told you. I did not go to North Korea, but I believe, and I hope, before I die, I will be able to go there, and we will be able to see Christian churches open all over North Korea. Remember that South Korea used to be zero Christian. Zero. And now there's more than 85% of the country Christians. 85 to uh, 90%. Right? <clears throat> anyway, I think we, have, we are here for long. Uh, that will make the video really long for you to download. Uh, maybe I should do editing for it and make it shorter, but maybe you can do that. I will keep this video only for a few hours. Please download it. China is the same. Just wait. When the Chinese government collapse, it's going to collapse. It's just a matter of time. All those comments, they will collapse. The Chinese, they are surviving more because of the stupid Western. You know, Western, sorry, when I say stupid Western, I mean government. The Western government, they gave China the reason to grow. And I'm talking about the Chinese 
communists, not the China as people. They support them in everything. How? They buy everything they do. Nobody stand against the communist. You see, it's very weird. I mean, when was the Soviet Union, they will not buy anything from the Soviet Union. They will not even allow them to sell oil. They will not allow them to sell weapon. They will not allow them to sell even toys. When it's come to China, which is very aggressive communist country, they buy everything from China. You know, you know what I mean? And this is why the country, uh, the communist, they are still not struggling. What is the reason for the Soviet Union to collapse? Economy. So what is the reason for the Chinese communists to collapse? It's going to be economy. But the European, they are supporting the economy of China by buying everything you can imagine. Same as you say, if you open right now, my Mac is made in China, you believe it? My Mac computer made in China. My Mac broke, I wanted to fix it, I opened the cover. The battery, it says China. The keyboard, it says China. Open your computer and you will see. So what is Apple company? Apple turned to be making nothing. Your phone is made in China. Your TV is made in China. Your chair is made in China. Your t-shirt is made in China. This is what the Western did. They say they are against the Chinese communist, but they buy everything from the Chinese government. So how you can make this country collapse as government? We don't want the Chinese to die, but this is how it works. You know what I mean? They have a short, they are short of logic. They have short vision. And all what I can say, that leaders in those countries are stupid. Literally. And they are a hypocrite. Trump, he want to put sanctions on China for not mistreating the Muslims, but he never mentioned what they do to the Christians. Why Trump is doing that? Because they accuse him that he is against Islam. So he want to show them that he is not against Islam. He support Muslims. See the hypocrisy? Same as the European Union, not even single one of them, he says, why the Christians don't have right in China. All of them, they are supporting the Muslim right in China, as if there's no Christian there. We don't have leaders, my friend. We have a bunch of potatoes. I want Trump to win the election, because if, we, if he don't win the election, we will have Antichrist person, literally. Democrat Party is Antichrist. Anyone who is a Christian, he votes for Democrat, he is voting for Antichrist. You are voting for abortion. You are voting for everything against the Bible, literally. I want Trump to be the president for the coming four years, because soon there's at least two judge in the Supreme Court need to be replaced. Already there's one judge, she is very old, she have cancer. If we have two more judge in the Supreme Court, USA changed forever, at least for the coming 20, 25 years. USA is going to be under conservative court, Christian court, literally. When the Democrat, they work all the time to make America as they wish. Antichrist, forbid the Bible, forbid the cross, fighting Christianity, this is what they wanted. Trump winning this coming election is very important. Already now, we became majority in the court. But having two more judge, that will make us the absolute majority. And that will change everything. So when the election come, if you are an American, and I am, I will go to vote for Trump. There's no question about that. Anyone, the Muslim, they vote for him, vote for the opposite person. <laughs> as simple as that. You know, uh, once I was in a chat room, this is during the time of Obama. So I ask a question, there's people they are asking to, do, to, to, uh, to uh, vote for Obama. I said, okay, well, you know, if Obama was a good guy, 
why the Muslims they vote for him. Remember, Obama is an ex-Muslim. Muslims are against gay and lesbian. Muslims, they are against abortion. Muslims, against everything America stands for. So why they are voting for Obama who's an ex-Muslim? They should be not only against him, they should hate him. According to Islam, actually, this guy, the punishment for him, you know, the apostate punishment. So why the Muslims are voting for him? But the answer is very simple. This guy will destroy America. So we vote for whoever will destroy it. And Joe Biden will destroy America. You will have a president. He is a toy. This guy don't even remember his name. This guy will sleep in the table after he sit in it for five minutes. Literally. So who's going to rule the country? Do you think this is about Biden? No, this guy is just a toy. They put him in the chair and, uh, you know, especially he have no, he is not the man. He was a stupid when he was young. How he will be when he's old, very old. So it's our duty when the election come to go and vote for Trump. Not because he is the best, but he's the only choice we have. And you know, America is a very funny country. I mean, uh, Key West, he want to go for election. <laughs> and Kim Kardashian would be the first lady. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, this country is really, I don't know what to say. You know, I love America. America is, you know, I've been in, in many, many countries during my life. But to be honest with you, I never loved a country as USA. I love Greece, by the way. I love really Greece from all my heart. But when it's come to America, it's a different country. It's amazing. But beside amazing America, which I love very much, and that's why I joined the USA Army to defend the country. Beside that, I don't find any reason to understand the stupidity running in this country. I mean, how in the world even there's a party would elect Biden to be the one who represent them? I mean, this is this is really crazy. <laughs> this is this is like like imagine yourself you are not American and you are watching the news in America, and then you see that this guy is going to be a president. I mean, what's wrong with this country? You know what I mean? They are going to divorce. No, my friend, they aren't going to divorce. Those people, they are. They like to be more famous. You see, all this propaganda and agenda, this is a stupid agenda to, to keep you busy with stupid things. He insulted her. She insulted him. He wanted to divorce her. The day after, he would apologize. So this, those are people. That, do, you know, do, you, do you see those people on YouTube who make blogs and in order to get themselves having more of you? The guy he fight with the wife. The wife, she's wearing a bikini. The husband, he's focusing his camera in, his, in her bum. I mean, come on. In America, publicity is money. Money. There's even many people, they fabricate rumors about themselves to be in the stage of publicity. Do you remember the guy who, he, he said, there's people who attacked him? And they are from the fan of Trump. Do you remember? This is publicity. He wanted to be more and more famous. News agency speak about him. People support him, etc. So he fabricated an attack. He hired two people from Nigeria. Supposedly they will attack him, and they are wearing the hat of a Trump. Publicity. There's a woman, she used to be famous before, I don't know who she is, I'm not really too much into artists and this, this garbage. So she posted her pictures naked in the bathroom. Why? Because nobody talked about her no more, she became so old. Publicity. Publicity is business. Have you gone to Israel? No, never. 
I wish one day, but I don't think they will allow me to enter the country because I'm an Arab. Right? Yeah. But maybe one day I will be able to go. Abduli, when I call me, will be open sky for him. He did not call. We open sky for 15, 20 minutes. He did not call. How many innocent lives you took till this day? Are you talking to us, Adil Ahmad? Are you talking to us? Come to Baghdad? I'm not interested in those countries. Middle East is the last place I would like to go to. I spend most of my life in this area. I'm sick of it. I don't want to see it again. I am not interested. And I'm not a fool to go there. Literally. But I will go to Israel because Israel either though even even though it's in the Middle East but if you saw Israel Israel have nothing to do with the Middle East which is amazing I mean just to change the people look what happened you go to the neighbors you, f you find yourself in the cave time you go to the Israeli area you find yourself in in the coming century you know what I mean just change the people nothing changed I mean the same land the same sand what happened Right? Anyway. Do we have any Abdul want to say anything? I do not understand why many of us in the West fascinated the Middle East. Well, there's no reason not to be fascinated, but not what we have there now. We can fascinate fascinated with the history before Islam. Islam destroyed what we have. The Middle East was something different from what we have now. Now it's a garbage, sadly. Sadly to say this about where I'm coming from. Islam came, those countries are gone. Right? As simple as that. Um, wherever Islam goes, actually, give give it Sweden to the Muslims. You will see Sweden will turn, will turn into Taliban, Afghanistan. How beautiful Sweden is. Give Norway, give it France. Just to change the religion, the country will become Taliban country. Right? It's not really, it's not the land. It is the people, my friend. It is not the land. It is the people and what they believe. The second you change the belief, the people change and the land change. You know what I mean? Change the people believe, the land will change. Make Germany Muslim, Germany will become Taliban of Afghanistan. As simple as that. It is not the land. That is not the problem. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for being here. We made the video, but the video now is so long. Uh, maybe we should do anything for it. I will keep it here for a few hours. Please download it. Share it with your friends. Especially the part where we are laughing at this idiot and his claim that he refuted us in his video. Do you see Islam go into an extent in the future? Well, this is the bent in how a human being, they react. Uh, for now, what I see that everybody is hypocrite. As long as we don't have real leaders, everybody is perfectly correct. Then everything fraud will continue. You see? 
Politically correct means fraud. When people don't dare to say their mind, it means we are living in dictatorship time. Dictatorship, but under freedom. You know what I mean? The title is a freedom, but the truth is dictatorship. Like now, if a Christian, he say his mind, he will be in trouble. If a Christian, he say something against Islam, he's Islamophobic. That is dictatorship. They try to mute you. So the title is a freedom, but the inside is not. Right? So we have to fight, and this is why I encourage Christians to go for election. Choose a Christian leaders. Check out their history before you vote for somebody. Someone he is not perfectly correct is the one who should present us. Enough is enough. This is why Trump, he won the election, because people are sick of lies and political correction. This guy, he say it as it is. He's like a kid. We need that. We are done with this garbage. We don't someone to lie to us and say this is, is okay and this is, no, this is not okay. Say it as it is. Time for us as a Christian to stand for the truth, and the truth is a Christ. And those who stood with the Christ, with the Lord, he will stood with them. Thank you guys for being here. Time to go. Otherwise, we will continue forever. And I know you will not let me go to sleep. It is really late for me now. And I think, I don't think I will be able to sleep, but it's time to go. Man, I eat you all. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here. May the Lord bless you. We pray for your safety, you and your family and your children. And we pray that this disease, Corona, will not hurt any of your family. We pray the Lord will open the eyes of the Muslims. We don't hate them. Uh, we know we might use a strong language against some Abdul. But I, my target is not the Abdul. My target is the lies and the stupidity of this garbage cult. So I hope Muslims will see the truth and the truth will set them free. And we pray that they will leave the garbage of Muhammad for garbage in, garbage out. Unless you come to the recycle machine with the Christian prince and we will make your garbage turn into something good. How? Watch me next time we go live on air and you will see how we do it. Christ is Lord, Islam is false. And see you soon again. Bye-bye.